here. Happy Friday, everybody. Shout out to everybody in the room already. How you doing today, Coop? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing all right, man. You know, it's always good to be here on a Friday. You know, we were talking offline the fact that it's really not a whole lot going on in hip hop this week. Uh, I tried to listen to the Lil Yachty and, you know, um, you know, peace to Yachty and his fan base and all that. He went to my high school, obviously not at the same time, but the instrumentation was good. But the rapping, it wasn't really rapping. It wasn't, it sounds like he wasn't even trying to do no rap stuff. So it, whenever people drop albums like that, it's damn near impossible for us to even do a deep dive and discussion about it. So. Well, do you um do you find um do you find it time to have a true subgenre conversation and say there is a such thing as alternative rap? What would alternative rap be, though? I think what you just heard today. <laughs> I think. Uh, I mean, judging from the way that you're describing it, what what makes it le- uh, what makes it different than regular alternative? What puts rap in it? That's a fair assertion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it it, um, it gets interesting, man. And I do love the fact that, you know, this era... Is it a live band playing or is it hip-hop beats? You know what I'm saying? Like, is there, like, samples and loops and, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I said it's not Tribe. I mean, who says Tribe's alternative rap? I mean... It's not alternative rap. That's just hip-hop. It's just rap. You know what I'm saying? It's some dope... And speaking of rap, I mean, we always hear this whole thing of... You know, that person's an MC and that person's a rapper. And I feel like we haven't really had a real discussion about is an MC different than a rapper or are they just, you know, are they one and the same? Like, what makes it where, because most people, if you ask somebody, right, if you had like multiple choice, right, and you pop up an a, a artist on the screen, they'd be like, is this an MC or a rapper? If you put Trick Daddy's picture up there, people would say he's the rapper and not an MC. Whereas if you put, you know, let's just say um, Large Professor up there, you would say he's an MC, right? Like, where does this differentiate? Is this regional stuff? Because usually people outside of New York get pegged with the rapper title, right? Mm -hmm. And not the MC title. Mm -hmm. What's the actual difference in your estimation? And I would love to hear from the people in the super chat and stuff too, um, you know, on their breakdown on this, so we can actually discuss this. You know, I think a lot of what you're um, forging in this conversation, it's it's some of it is intangible, Mike, and so it's hard to qualify it. It is truly one of those things where it's like you kind of know some of the separation of it when you hear it, you know, but it's very, very, very subjective, I would say. Um, I look at an MC from a traditional sense as a true like master of ceremonies, as in like that person can do it all and it translate. It translates from the way it sounds. Uh in the booth when they record it through multiple uh, phases. I think somebody we've been discussing a lot lately, KRS-One, is a great example of what an MC is. Well, I think he's the one that kind of started this separation of the conversation because, in my opinion, it's like, are you going to sit here and say Run DMC are MCs or rappers? And why? See, this is what I mean. So, for like, so how qualified are we to speak on like whether they are MCs from that era? You know what I mean? From an era that's kind of like. <clears throat> I think we're qualified as fans. If something has a definition, it has a definition. You know what I mean? Um, Ohio K with the super chat says, "Before we get started, why do people hold freestyles so high?" Probably uh, the dopest stuff that we heard was something written down first. That's another thing that has changed over time, too. And we've heard Kane say things like, you know, a freestyle was something that you wrote down that wasn't about anything. Whereas in another era, a freestyle became only if you were coming off the top of the head. 
Whereas in the previous era, they said uh, off the top of the head was something different than the freestyle. Your freestyles were just like your rhymes that really didn't find no album placement nowhere. They were just dope ass rhymes for like Kane and all the. Right. But in the era I grew up in, if you were spitting something that was written down, that wasn't considered a freestyle. So Correct. people had changed the definition of that, which I, I'm not cool with. I mean, I think that the definition should be with the people who created the actual, you know, term in action. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like we kind of do some of the similar things with the MC and, and rapper thing. But I'm sorry. Go on. go ahead. You were saying something. I mean, no. I mean, I really wasn't. I really wasn't going anywhere direct. I was just kind of like trying to, like you know, like 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 illustrate some things that KRS One does uh, in terms of the translation that makes him a um, an MC. Quite frankly, and this is what I mean about the translation is is that. Well, it works in the studio, it works in the car, it works on the street, it works with the people, it works with the message, it works live, like it does all the things because the MC is a master of ceremonies. A rapper to me is somebody that it's like, well, they're good in the studio. Well, give an example, if you will. I mean... I don't really want to do that. <laughs> well, I want to do that because I feel like certain people who get pegged as a rapper fit all those criteria that you're talking about. Like, a lot of people would say somebody like 2 Chains is a rapper and not an MC, but I feel like he fits all of that. I feel like with his voice, delivery, cadence, uh, catchy uh, phrases, he's an MC to the highest order. See, this is what I mean. There's like... um, He can control like, the crowd. It's, it's, I could imagine. It's, 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 I, could you see him in the park controlling the crowd? I'll give you, okay, I'll give you an example of somebody who I think, who you know that I love and enjoy, that I think used to be a rapper and is now an MC. Rick Ross. Do you understand, like, 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 like Ross was a great rapper, like, on his first few albums. You know what I'm saying? Like, his in, <clears throat> he's great, like, in the studio at putting a song together and giving you the record that you need, but nothing that he's doing is necessarily uh, touching you. You don't you know think what I'm hustling? Saying? No, what hustling I mean touching you, not like, it, not, not like the enjoyability of the record. I mean, MCs make you feel something. They're a master of ceremonies. You're coming to see them for a reason. They just don't provide you with a couple of hits. You know what I'm saying? Like Ross for his first few albums, he's what I would call like a studio rapper. He provides you with mostly just the notable things or the hits in the songs that are made in the studio. And those songs don't necessarily translate like on all levels, like I'm talking about. Like you can talk about a record or two, but that's what I'm saying. Like MCs don't have a record or two. KRS-One has like six or seven records like that on his first album. Well, let's stop using KRS-One because he's one of the, you know, five to 10 greatest We're talking artists, about period. MCs. But I'm what saying, are we if to we're do? Gonna, but so no, if we're talking about MCing, I mean, there should be someone that's further down the line that is considered an MC too. I feel like I it, just bought. A, I'm bringing up Ross right now for a reason. I'm talking about the transition. No, I'm talking about somebody who started off as an MC because I feel like we peg MCs with the whole lyricist thing. If you're a lyricist, then you're an MC. That's what it seems like. It seems like even in your Rick Ross example, it's kind of a quality thing. You know what I mean? No, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not an equality thing. It's um. It's a capability thing. Cause like, even though, how about this? Even though a young Tupac is inconsistent, he's still an MC because you can hear that he can do all the things. Okay, what what are all the things again? I just went through them, Mike. I literally just said them all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, say, can you say it again? Because I'm trying to think of, you know, like Ross's beginnings and if he wasn't able to do that. And you were saying the songs were able to do that. No, 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 I'm saying he had some records here and there that's able to make you feel certain things, but he overall didn't have an overall feel and a persona. There's a control and a command. It's an intangible thing. That's what I'm saying. It's just like you want to know what a great example of it is? It's like when we're talking about quarterbacks, quarterbacking and MC and it's kind of the same. It's like there are some guys, it's like from the moment that they walk in, 
and it's, and it's and it has nothing to do with their athletic gets. It has nothing to do with this. Joe Burrow, Mike, you know what I'm saying? He's somebody when he walks in the room, it's like, oh no, 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 this team is going from two and fourteen in two years to the Super Bowl. Listen to what I'm saying. In two and four, you know, because he intangibly has some things that make people gravitate towards him and his style of play and his way of doing things. He's not as athletic as Lamar or Josh Allen or Mahomes, but he's just as good because he intangibly has some things that quite frankly, none of them have that I've seen. You get what I'm saying? And so emceeing is not just like about the record. It's about how people feel and gravitate towards like the quality of that overall delivery of that person. It's just like the park jams, Mike, people growing up the sheet, see the person who's the most entertaining with the best voice, with the best rhymes, with the most skills, with the best chicks around them. Like it wasn't just one thing that got you to be the best dude in the park jam. Like having the best rhymes didn't just make you the man in the park jam. It was everything else that came with it. You have to do all the things. So Eminem's a rapper. 36 yes. Chambers. <laughs> yes. 36 Chambers with the Super Chat says, an MC can write uh, thought-provoking lyrics. Here we go with the lyrics again. Uh, rock a party, has classics, uh, move a crowd as well, and can put together and make well-crafted song out and albums. A rapper, rhymes, a, a rapper rhymes well in the booth only, in my opinion. <laughs> But uh, where do these definitions come from, I guess? You know what I mean? This is what I mean about how some of it's intangible. You just know it when you see it. Like when I when I was watching the Buffalo Cincinnati game and I watched Cincinnati's first two drives, I was like, oh, shit. I said, everybody's in trouble. I said, because it's like it's not just him. It's that everybody around him is like, that's the man. That's how this goes. I get. I understand what you're saying, and I think it's slightly different because the quarterback position, it has a job, just like you know the center position. Man, in these NBA. rappers got jobs. These rappers slash MCs got jobs. I understand that, but I'm saying when the rules of the game were written, the rules of these positions were you know jotted down. My question is, where do the? Because I don't remember where any of this comes from. Where okay, MC does this, this, and this, and a rapper just you know, makes words rhyme in the booth. Like, where does this come from? There's, there, there, this is what I'm saying. There's a translation and a sentiment that's both tangible and intangible. That's what I'm trying to express to you. I understand what you're saying, but I'm saying, like, even for your personal definition, where did that come from for you? Like, who... Was that verbal? Was that something that, you know, was you know, written down? Was that something that was said in an interview with KRS? Like, you know what I mean? Like, where does it come from? I think I don't it just know. comes from my overall, like, just synopsis from being in the culture. And that's what I mean about it being so subjective. I really can't, I can't really, like, disparage anybody else's necessary, like, opinion about it. Um, if you want to bring up KRS one more, one more time, he and Rakim would be somebody that I would think that just from the time that they did it and also how they're looked upon as forefathers of this at this point and a certain craft of, M of emceeing, uh, which does involve lyricism to a degree, I believe, uh, th they're more authoritative to speak on it th th than you and I. And so I would be, you know, at their kind of um, at kind of at their will and kind of at their whim on how they would feel about the dichotomy of that. Wouldn't you say? Definitely. And I think Rakim was one of the early examples of, you know, somebody who spoke about emceeing and the actual job of emceeing. Like, you know, because to me and the fact that he even said it in that way, he said to me, MC means move the crowd. So it wasn't like there was a, a overall definition of it. That was what it meant to him. You know what I mean? Uh, Jadarion with the Super Chat says, My understanding coming up was the MCs represent the culture of hip-hop as a whole while a rapper just raps well, but doesn't represent all the elements. Uh, Peter Parks with the Super Chat says, Blessings, guys. Another great topic to dig into. Definitely. And again, I don't want to be argumentative here. I just want to... Because people kind of throw those things around and almost kind of denigrate certain artists and delegate them to just being a rapper like oh you're not an mc level yet you know what i mean and i think that it's it's um 
it's important to actually get definitions to these things before you know it because it, it's like some of the head to be like if it's good it's hip-hop if it's bad it's rap no, see, you know it's what not I mean? even about it's not even about quality necessarily because dr dre is a rapper no, I understand what you're saying, and I agree with you. I just think a lot of people throw it around on a quality level. Like MC is a good is good, rapper is bad, hip hop. No, I mean. You making hip hop music is good. You making rap music is bad. You know what I mean? I think this is what I mean about some of the intangible part of it. It's somebody who does represent the culture. Like when people are talking about the culture aspect of it, that's part of that intangible aspect of it. It's hard to qualify because the people choose that. I was going to say, who actually, you know, when, when guys are at their height, and, uh, I mean, that goes for pretty much anybody in any era, when you pop in and you're trying to cross over and you're on MTV, TRL, mm-hmm. or, you know, you're performing in front of um, crossover audiences, are they really representing the culture? Are they going out their way to represent the culture? Or is that more of an underground thing? I th- if this is what I mean about how like it's just like one of those things where it's intangible and people know it. It's like um, I was watching the old Nana show, like the Godson show that's on like the DVD, mm-hmm. like I where he's doing DVD. Made You Look and he does the Made You Look remix. I went and watched it because, you know, they did the they did everything like there, like the remix and all that, too. But, you know, DMC came out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you remember when DMC came out and what he said about Nas? Talking about when he was at the bank uh, after um, after raising hell, and he heard about Nas. He's like, he's dropping knowledge. <laughs> so it's a sentiment and a feeling. It's intangible. Well, let me it's ask, what well, you gravitate towards. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He didn't say nothing about him being lyrical, now did he? When I be telling you and talking about Nas, I be talking about the setup. That's like a grimy ass story. I'm not talking about no lyricism. Well, I got something for you in a second. Let me get to these super chats. Mad Max says, uh, if we're going to be for real, an MC is someone who uses uh, their words, charisma, etc. to control the room. That's why it's called Master of Ceremony. I mean, yeah, by definition. Uh, 36 Chambers says, uh, the definition is in the name, Master of Ceremony. It's someone who controls a room and a situation. It's almost a common sense um, uh, feel thing, it seems. But, 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 I would, again, I would quibble with that because somebody, like a 2 chains again, he can command and demand a crowd better than Talib Kweli can, but people will tell you Talib Kweli is the MC of the two, correct? He, it, it, let's just keep it real here, guys. Let's keep it real. The people who get tagged with this MC title aren't the people who are moving tens of thousands of people in audiences. It's just not. See, this is what I mean about it's intangible and it's a sentiment and it's a feeling. So I guess um, I get what you're saying. Like, quality is somebody that people would classify as an MC. And you're saying that's being attached to his lyricism and persona, per se. Is that what you're saying? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. You know, if, if you put him in Buster Rhymes... So you don't Rhymes, think that's fair? I'm I don't sorry, think I that that... No, no, I, no. I don't think that the definition that people are giving is consistent with the, you know, with the true examples that are out there. No, We're not calling I an mean. MC because he, he moves the crowd. You know what I mean? No, this is what I mean about how it is um, very subjective. So I'm not necessarily arguing um, against any of your uh, your statements or your sentiments. I'm just asking questions because yeah. it is so subjective from error to error and even person to person. I can only offer my perspective. That's why I mean somebody like Rakim or KRS-One who like was in more of the transitional time for the MC slash rapper. Right. Like, cause I think, <clears throat> cause here's why people kind of look at it like an evolution. I think at one point, I think like, for the most part, with the exception of a few guys, it's mostly been rappers up until the point that we got the Rock M's and the G Raps and the KRS ones and all that. Right. It's like there's a Melly Mel and a and a Modi and a um, and a Cass and a Cass like like here and there, but the rest of them dudes is rappers. You feel what I'm saying? Right, right, right. But it's, you know what? And to and to piggyback off of that, hip hop needed the rappers to get hip-hop on a big playing field. We needed the Run DMCs. 
We needed the uh, Curtis Blows. We needed the Houdinis. We needed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they yeah. were also still representing our culture the exactly. right way. That's what I mean about it being intangible. It's like, like even when Run DMC did Walk This Way, we all thought to ourselves, that's really fucking cool if they just did that. Is LL you know? Cool J an MC or a rapper? I think he's an MC. Because I think some of it, because I think your songwriting capability is one of those things that, that like evolved in that era that kind of came with it. That's what I mean about doing all the things. I think he's an MC too, but I think by like everyone. You got to write the whole song from beginning to end. You want to hit, give me an hour plus a pen and a pen. But pad. a rapper can do that, right? Based on people's definition. He's more of a rapper than an MC, based on the definition that people put out there. Hmm. Sounds like he's a rapper more than an MC, per se. I mean, doesn't L do all the things, though, and doesn't it transition, though? He does. But, Think about it. Like, but rappers like how dope do is too. L Live that he's been hosting award shows? Of course. I mean, he's so, an course, MC so, by so definition. So he's an MC, Mike. Like, think about it. It's like he's hosting fucking award shows now. He's an MC, he's an MC, like yeah. on a whole nother level. Right. Mad He's Max like Dick Clark with this shit. <laughs> Mad Max with the Super Chat says, LOL, Mike, rapping is just a skill. And MC uses um, Ali rapped words as not as an MC, bro. Uh, he said Ali rapped words. He's not an MC, bro. It's like saying because uh, you can pass the ball, well, then you're a point guard. It's just not how, you, how it works. Well, it sounds like to me. I, again, that's why yeah. I want to know the examples of people that you guys consider non MCs but rappers because it sounds like just about any rapper that we can think of fits in this MC criteria. That's where I'm confused at. So it's like I told you, Dr. Dre is a rapper. Um, well, Dr. Just, Dre I, doesn't write his rap. I told you, know you Eminem I mean? is a rapper. Huh? Um, Who else? Eminem is a rapper. Okay. But, um,. I tell you what, it's like, you know, he, here's the thing. How about this? With Jay, Jay transitions between MC and rapper oftentimes. How so? Um, he, okay, so like the guy, Mike, the guy that's on volume two, like, well, he's mostly just rapping. That's just mostly just for the studio. It's not trying to transition. It's not trying to do anything. It's trying to pop like, like on a certain level, like outside of a few records. That's what I'm saying. It's like you can hit with a few records. Now, now on volume one, even though he's inconsistent, oh, no, 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 he's emceeing and he's embodying something that hip hop is gravitating towards, even on volume one, not even talking about reasonable doubt. But people you gravitated what towards volume two in droves. It, it sounds like you're talking more so on a lyrical skill level. No, 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 I'm talking about the actual formation of the songs and the embodiment of the culture and what you're really like embodying that's going to like transition and like carry. So you don't feel like um, Hard Knock Life, the song itself, you don't feel like that's emceeing, that's rapping? I said there are moments. Well, what, what moments is he rapping and not emceeing? I mean, pretty much everything except for, like, Reservoir Dogs, A Week Ago, Hard Knock Life, Nigga What, Nigga Who. Everything else is pretty much he's just, like, rapping. Really? I, yeah. I disagree, huh? Let me just, get to the just, super just, but, I mean, I mean, he's not... He's not. He's not Jay Mike. He's not. He's not. He's not MCing like that. No, I, don't know. I think that again, you're correlating like where he's going lyrically and lyrical intensity with MC. No, it's not lyrically. Hard Knock Life isn't like dope lyrically. Like a week ago is not dope lyrically. Like his mm. dopest MC moment might be a week ago. That's what I'm saying about it being intangible, Mike. It's something that you gotta feel and gravitate towards. A week ago is probably the best song on Volume Two. There's nothing lyrical about that. Are there songs that? Yeah, hold on, let me go to the Super Chat. It's just that moment lost. where you can hear that he can do what, Mike? All the things, and it comes together. That's what an MC does. And some of that is intangible. It's not always, you are not. You can't always correlate it between the numbers. You can't always correlate it between the lyricism. That's why I keep saying all the things. It's everything, Mike. It's when you know when you hear a guy, and it's like, oh, did you hear that shit? Like when you hear a week ago, it's like, you don't think a rapper wrote that. You think a great MC wrote that. When you hear like the ride or die song, it's like, oh, that's some rap shit. You know, so rappers saying? can't be great. No, I didn't say rappers can't be great. Jay's great on volume two. So when Even you if... when you're rapping, because it's Jay, all the rapper is still great. Because it's all rapping, right? 
when you're rapping in, in LA, bubbling in Dublin, can't deny me. Why would you want me? You need me. That's not MC. Why don't you try me? That's rapping, Mike. Why is that not MC? And that record that's controls rapping. the he's crowd more than anything. He's just, putting, he's just putting words together to sound good in the studio that's going to play well on radio. He's just rapping, Mike. He's not MCing. He's it not It translates you well live, too, like, though. Like, 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 how about this, Mike? <laughs> Have you, you've been to an art gallery before, right? Mm hmm. You've seen paintings that they look beautiful, but you just pass by them because they don't evoke any sort of feeling out of you, okay? Right? Like when the MC's doing all the things, he evokes something out of you the same way a great painting does. Rappers don't do that. They don't evoke something out of you. A week ago, evoke something out of people. That's why people still talk about it to this day. It's one of his great MC moments. You know what it sounds like you're saying. And it, and it to has me. nothing to do with him being lyrical. There's not one hip hop quotable verse on a week ago, like on a lyrical level. It's what, just a great song. It's a great MC moment. What it sounds like to me is you're putting skill, le like when you reach a certain skill level, you're MCing. When you're not hitting that mark, you're rapping. So what it also sounds like is there's no such thing as subpar MCing. And there's also no such thing as great rapping, because once your rap reaches a certain level, then you're emceeing now. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, there have been people that have like progressed and then like regressed or just kind of like stand the pat. But usually, when you progress, you usually stay like on a certain pocket in a certain level. Like once you've progressed, as I would say, and I do kind of like, and maybe I'm old fashioned. I do look at it like more of an actual progression, Mike. I really, really do because. This is what I mean, like, <clears throat> like, do not tell me that the Rick Ross that you're hearing on Port of Miami is the same guy on God Forgives and I Don't. That's not the same guy. I think that's just him improving as an artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, he still what? has a what? As an artist. When you, when you improve in this genre, you tend to tra transition from somebody who just raps words in the studio and makes a couple of big records and connects sometimes. Like, it's like connecting with the jab sometimes. Connecting with the jab sometimes ain't about to win you the damn fight. So there are no great rappers. The rappers who are great just transition to MCs. No, I mean, I think you can be great and be a rapper. I just think there's a place for it on how you get measured at the end of the day. Let me get to the Super Chats real quick. Jay Short says, uh, when, when I think of an MC, I think of uh, Cypher slash Wordsmith slash uh, Types Rapper. I don't think uh, Tretch is a top 10 rapper, but as an MC, he's definitely up there. Uh, Andrew Green with the Super Chat says, um, the confusion comes because in the past 90s era, when rap became a big business, most of the artists were hybrids. Uh, both MCs and rappers, but not all were lyricists. Some lyricists can't MC though. Hmm. Well, uh, you know, I, well, let me get through these super chats, and I have something that I want to kind of bring to the table because I think it's a very relevant example. Eric Terrell with the two super chat says, um, "When rap music came out in the '70s, the process was called rapping, and the rapper." Uh, was called an MC. Uh, they were the same. Uh, some are better than others. Hammer and Nas are both MCs. Yes, MC Hammer. Different styles, both move the crowd. I agree with Eric Terrell. That's where I'm at with it. I think they're the same. You know what I'm saying? I think MCs rap and rappers MC. You know? And I think that we kind of separate this on a quality level some sometimes because where people are taking it culturally. Uh, LP says with the Super Chat, in my opinion, lyrics should be a 20 uh, rated compared to everything else, being a 15 max. That's how much more putting words together matters to anything else in hip-hop. Now, I do clearly believe that there's a difference between a lyricist and a rapper now. Now, that I think there is a difference uh, with. Kendall Outlaw with the Super Chat says, Nelly and Ludacris are rappers. Ah, Nas and Biggie are MCs. See the difference? I was going to bring up Biggie because I remember in the 90s and when Biggie was out, it was popping champagne. You know, a lot of MCs and a lot of people in that, you know, core of the backpack era had issue with Biggie and Bad Boy and them being so shiny and not representing hip hop in that way. They weren't considering Biggie hypnotized as an MC. 
They were not. You know what I'm saying? And I think Biggie is probably the shining example of what people would say or what MCs would say is a rapper. He just happens to be skilled out of this fucking world. What say you? He does all the things, so how is he not an MC and master of ceremonies? I think he's an MC. I just think that how is that he not whole MC? notion of a rapper and an MC being different is that divide that we had when we had That's the, that the conscious divide community that talking about though? Well, no, I That's, mean, from, I don't think anybody. Well, Big's not lyrical because I. T- no, I don't I, think Big's the roots not, would say that that Biggie wasn't lyrical when they did that. Never do what they do. Um, video that was about Bad Boy and Big. I mean, let's just be real. Yeah, yeah it was, and, and it was talking about how they represented hip hop. And that they weren't keeping it real. They weren't on some MC shit. They were on some rap shit. Remember? I mean, this is what I'm saying when I mean, well, how can you say that? Because it's like, that's 96 when the Roots do what they do. So, big has shit like, um, step into the realms of Junior Mafia. Remember that verse? Oh, man, listen, yeah. Listen, you know how I feel about Biggie. I'm Look, just saying I mean, the blur no, lines funny, and the not definition. Not old history. Who shot shit came out in '95. Of course. Okay. Dreams. That's not warning. Some... No, listen. That warning. could be rapping. Warning. That could be rapper stuff. Do you think that Ludacris is a rapper and not an MC? Because Kendall Outlaw thinks so, and I think it's wild because this man was actually a radio personality. And actually can host shit better than LL Cool J can. So why is he a rapper? And not an know. MC? I think, no, I think Luda's an MC. I've never said that he was a rapper. No, Kendall Outlaw did. He said oh. Nelly and Ludacris are rappers. Nas and Biggie <laughs> are MCs. See the difference? I don't see the difference, actually. Do you, in that example, do you see the difference? That's 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 that lyrical side coming in. So I think I think where the divide is that we're, we're you know, I don't want to run too far in circles with this conversation. I think the divide that we're having is trying to appropriate, I think, the level of lyricism and content into it. See, I'm trying to identify the intangible the best way that I know how. If you want to know it, how about this? Even if you feel like Biggie's a rapper on Ready to Die. He has MC moments. It's like when I heard Unbelievable on the radio on the late night mix for the first time when I was in Charlotte, I was like, oh, it's like, what is that? I like, I've never heard nothing like that before. I think the stuff you're talking about is lyricism. And, you know, but, and. But, but I, Mike, Unbelievable's not some super lyrical tour de force. Live from Beth to Stive the Sun, the livest one, representing BK to the fullest, gets a pull it. Bastards ducking when big be bucking, chicken heads be clucking in my back room fucking. It ain't nothing. That's not super lyrical, that Mike. That is lyricism because the way he's putting together those words is very lyrical. Because that's what MCs do. They put it together. They do all the things. Rappers and I keep MC- trying to explain how unbelievable is an MC moment, but it's not super lyrical. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You don't have to be super lyrical, Mike, to be like, in MC, Mike, I told you, you know, I listen to the setup like almost every week. Like when Nas is going in tight parasuko with young faces, could turn niggas but a Fuko of all ages. Shout out you get to what uh, I'm saying? that's MC shit, Mike. Rappers can't do that. Shout out to uh, Daryl Glover with the $20 super chat. He says the prime example of MCs and rappers is through the locks versus dip set. Uh, the locks understood moving the crowd. Uh, Dipset, I'm hearing the echo. Is that on your end? I'm Hello? not talking, but um, I didn't hear one. Oh, no, no. I can't I hear it on my side, at least. Uh, the locks understood that moving the crowd, Dipset um, relied on their songs and uh, were unprepared. It's not about the songs or how lyrical, but how you rock the mic. Hmm. How you come off. So Jim Jones is a rapper and not an MC. I think that would be a fair assertion, yes. Okay. Uh, I, I'm i still with Eric Terrell on this. I just think that there's levels. You know what I mean? I think the rappers and MCs do the same things. You know what I mean? And I think there's just levels to 
how great you are at your craft. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, you, you those think, you dudes think... aren't the performers that, you know, Styles and Jada are. They're just not. You know what I'm so saying? You think, but you think we're... huh? let me ask you something. I don't mean to interrupt you. I apologize. You think we're trying to use the word rapper as like a demotive term? Mm -hmm. Like Definitely. Okay. And that's how it comes up. I mean, you even saw in the example where it was like Nelly and Ludacris, rappers, Nas and Biggie, MCs. It's like, okay, I see where this is going. Uh, 36 Chambers says, is, um, is rapper versus lyricist a better debate than MC? Yes. Now, I think there's clearly a difference in a lyricist and a rapper or MC because a lyricist focuses on lyrics. Lupe Fiasco is a lyricist. You know what I'm saying? Like... So do you think he's an MC as well? Of course. I think he. I think rappers and MCs are pretty much the same thing. I think they're just levels to your abilities at that craft. I think that. I think, the I think lyricism thing is, is just different. To take like, a like Jeezy doesn't focus on lyricism. Lupe does. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. Now I can actually give somebody a clear cut definition of that. You know what I mean? But the MC and rapper conversation gets murky. It's like. Who and why? It seems like whoever reaches a certain level of rap skills, now you're an MC. Marquez Davis with the Super Chat says, uh, told you, DJ Clark can't call Jay the best MC and Big the best rapper. I still have a hard time understanding that. Of course you do, because it's confusing. I don't understand it either. And that's a lyrical thing, too, because I've always told you if I would ever give Jay one nod over Big, it would be for lyricism. And that's probably where he's going with it. I always found him to be yeah. more of a pure natural lyricist. Yeah. Now, if you said, I would say Jay-Z's the better lyricist and Big's the better, you know, MC or rapper or whatever, I get that. But when you say that, you know, Jay's the better MC and Big's the better rapper, it's like, what does that mean? So what we're really trying to, what you're really trying to say, Mike, is we need to put the MC and the rapper back into one jar together. Yeah, MC Hammer. I think that was a great example that Eric Terrell gave. I he's an MC, but he's not super skilled or anything. He's an MC. You know, but that's what I'm saying. You don't have to be super skilled to pull it off. Like that's, it's not, it's not a skill. You know, that's what I mean about it being intangible. Sometimes it's a will thing. Like a lot of people like hate on Hammer, but there's a reason like Hammer was walking around with like endorsement deals. And thirty man entourages and buying like mansions with like gold gates with big H's on them and stuff like you know what I'm saying like you know he was out here like rocking the crowd rocking the show yeah they put me in the mix as the shit Mike yeah I mean I think he's probably the last of that era of MCs like he comes from the Run DMC era you know what I mean you could tell by his style his delivery his cadence. But that doesn't take away from the fact that he's an MC. You know and what I mean? This is what I mean too. And Hammer from the Yay, you know, like Hammer and his people back in the day, you know, they would um, you know, you don't play with niggas from the Yay. They yeah. were deep. Yeah, yeah, Hammer's a real dude. Um, yeah, just you run with the super yeah. chat says an MC can rap their own uh, rhymes. Rapper is a puppet. Okay. See again, demotive terms. People that don't write their own uh, rhymes but deliver it very well. Lil' Kim, Dr. Dre are rappers. Sugar Hill Gang were rappers, not MCs. Cass is an MC. Now, if somebody wanted to say yes, the difference is rappers don't write their stuff and MCs write their own stuff. I could go with that definition, but I don't think that's where people always go. I could go with that definition because, yeah, you're basically writing, rapping what's on the page, whereas an MC is crafting the rhymes. Uh, Mad Max says, rapping is the skill, MCing is the art form. I mean, that sounds good, but what the fuck does that even mean? That sounds, what does that even mean, Mad Max? Come on, man. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> J, like, JB was here like, with the super like, chat. Says <laughs> MC. See, here we got another one. JB uh, was here. Says MCC rhymes as an art form, not a way to get on. Really? I think everybody. See, now we're who, talking about everybody intentions. who signs on that dotted line is trying to get on. Let's keep it a buck, guys. Now we're talking about intentions. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> that's why. That's why I feel like we gotta have this conversation because everybody's definitions all over the place. 
So now MCs don't want record deals, huh? MCs don't want um MCs don't want advances and budgets, huh? MCs are out here doing this because they love it, huh? Uh, LP with the super chat says Kumo D and Busy B were both MCs. After the battle, the separation uh, was made clear. It wasn't just about controlling it, uh, controlling the crowd. You had to do both. Definitely. Just you run with the super chat says. Y'all would be surprised how many folks had stuff uh, written for them. That makes that makes you a rapper, not an MC. The overall goal is to make great music, though. Okay, we do got to separate the people who have stuff written for them, but we also need proof, too. We can't just be throwing that around to everybody. Uh, Jay Short with the Super Chat says, I think we have to be careful because a lot of people correlate MC to, to that classic New York sound. When it sounds, uh, when it's not in some New York Molly Mall slash Primo ish, people tend to say it's not MC. I agree with you, Jay Short. Shout out to the West Coast. Um, hold on, I'm about to say, yeah, because we because we talk about chat. when we talk hold about on, West Coast on. MCs, we talk no. about the ones with East Coast influences. Like no, no, I was, no, Mike. I was no, I was actually about to say before you even go there. I knew you was mm-hmm. about to go there. Snoop's an MC, mm-hmm. right? I think right? so, definitely. Now, when has Snoop ever been known for some lyrical miracle? You ever seen Snoop on a hip hop quotable of the source? No. But he's an MC, right? But some people would say he's a rapper because of that, though. He made the shiznit. He's an MC. <laughs> Esquire with a super chat says uh, on a recent Drink Champs interview, Nori stated. That Nas actually thought the Roots, uh, what they do song, was about him as well. Thought and Nas uh, had a short-lived tension uh, dated back to the Jay Z slash Nas feud. I well, that's because the Roots did the unplug thing. Yeah, Jermaine Johnson with the super chat says, um, "Let's not simplify this. On Peppers, Westside is rapping, but Talib's and seeing in every way of the definition." Again, I think that's lyrical talent differences i mean would you say that west side is an mc or rapper rapper hmm but but, but he's like but but that's his intention though because for him he's not trying to be an mc he's trying to be like a curator of like the culture and he's made that clear he's like he said if i wanted to be like the best like rapper slash mc or whatever he's like i could do that he's like that's just not my focus my focus is the whole culture I feel like he's doing everything that you say MCs do, in my opinion. He might not be as skilled as Conway or Benny as a lyricist, but I think he's still MC. I think Biz is Biz Marquee an MC. Okay, okay, so I'll tell you something. So let let's let let's go beyond the scope of hip hop and really look at like 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 what we're saying. MC master of ceremonies move the crowd like Mm -hmm. like what it really means. Um, it's it's a movement that the masses gravitate towards that you're having. That's part of the reason why I tell you it's like, no, 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 for whatever the roots or whatever may feel about that Biggie movement, no, 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 that, that had a whole section of hip-hop that got created that people gravitated towards. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's... Marvin Gaye is an MC. Stevie Wonder's an MC. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 if you were to look at it, like, outside of the genre, it's like, oh, it don't matter what you do, and it's like people gravitate to it. It's not about, like, the lyrical level per se. It's about it, like, representing something and embodying something that people gravitate to. That's part of it. It's not the only thing. I think that's the part of it that we're not discussing that I keep trying to say, like, matters in this. And that's how culture, that's how culture shifts and tipping points happen. But you, you know? keep naming people who are at the highest of skill level. You know what I'm saying? So it it comes across as a skill level thing because Which, everybody who seems to get this MC tag are like the highest of skill level. I mean, to be an MC, you know what I mean? Is 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 it's high praise. Why wouldn't we speak of it that way? Like it is attaining something that is like worthy of like high praise. So again, you know what, I'm what is being a rapper then? Like again, who's the shining example of I'm, I this mean, person's a rapper? You want, you want to know what we do it this way, Mike? Because we don't have a ranking system. Like if we if we had a ranking system, people's feelings would get hurt. I would love it if we would do it the way that golf and tennis do it and rank everybody and actually come up with a system 
and rank everybody. Watch how many of these niggas fold up in their feelings because this is an ego-driven game. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I mean about a lot of it being intangible. Oh, Mike, you don't want to just like make it factual, factual and rank it out. Niggas' feelings going to get hurt. Homeboy Blaze with the Super Chat says, I think this will clear it up for me. Is Benny a rapper and Conway an MC or vice versa or both? What say you? I mean, Benny's always had very, very, uh, like, I don't know, execution of the subject matter is the issue. But the subject matter, like in the content, some of the things he speaks on have been there. You know what I'm saying? It's part of why you like Tana Talk Free so much. So I would say he's an MC. And same for Con- Conway? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, no, 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 they MC. It's just like, you know, is it is it now do they MC to the level that a Nas or a Big do? It's like, oh, well, no, I would probably tell you no, but it's like, you know, but there it goes again. It's like, well, how fair is it going to compare them to them? It's like, well, it's not, but that don't mean that they don't MC. Well, what about um, Amani Caesar? Rapper. Why? Because I don't think like the songs and the gravitation is like there yet. Like, you know, how mm. I personally feel about it is different, but like objectively speaking. Hmm. Interesting. Esquire with the Super Chat says, what makes one an MC is the ability to check all the primary boxes. I just lyrics, said, I'm just saying do all the things. That's lyrics, it. performance, voice, delivery, flow, and uh, persona entertainment value. Like, okay. How about this? All right. So l- l- let's take uh, Armani Caesar through here. Lyrics, you think she likes that? I see the growth. I see the development. I don't know if she's all the way there yet. I think her performance is stellar. I think that her voice... I think her performance in the booth is stellar. I think when she goes out there and, you know what I'm saying, and and perform, it's very Kim-like in the fact where she captivates the room when she's there. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, voice, delivery, (laughs) flow, I think that's on point. And I think the uh, persona... The Mike, Mike, hold on, pause. You talking about Captivating the Room. Have you seen it? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, that's not hard. Next. But I'm just saying. I mean, she does the job. Um, and then you got voice, delivery, flow. That's stellar. And uh, persona slash entertainment value. Why okay, is she not an MC? Now, 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 where's those intangible things that make you, like, gravitate towards it, though, Mike? We listen to the records. It doesn't but, uh, have to but, be. But that's what I mean. In so, depth so subject matter. Right? thing. So, so when people are talking about who the best female MC is, is that whose name is coming up? Because I know we say her name and put her name in the conversation, but it's the full gravitation of it like that. Well, that's I what think I mean that's about because being... I think that's just because of you know lack of mainstream support. I don't even know who you know from a main, mainstream level who she's even signed to. So we could say that people are gravitating to Glorilla, but she's not better than Omani, Omani Caesar. No. No. So I don't no. know if that's a great gauge. Eric Terrell with the Super Chat You says, bought up Armani, not me. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just saying the fact that you're saying that people aren't bringing her up in these female MC conversations. But you're, but you're saying she deserves to be. I think she does. I think the reason why she's not is because she's not signed to a major entity. Because, again, we saw how somebody like Cardi or Glorilla can get that consideration overnight. Listen to what I'm saying, though. This is what I mean about, like, the crack. I believe... Oh, I'm sorry. One of the... um, One of the um, Super Chats, I believe, spoke to the craftsmanship side of it, Mike. Correct? Mm-hmm. This is what I mean. So let's go to the craftsmanship side of it. What's your three favorite songs on the list, too? Uh, off the top of my head, hold on, let me pull up the list, too. That's where we are. That's what I'm talking no, about. No, no, I think we're just in there in general with music. I want to make sure that I pick the right one. It's just so much music out there. I know off the top, I love Paula Deen. Uh, I was going to say Mel Gibson off the top and Meth and Mary. I like Meth and Mary yeah. a lot. Um, <laughs> Eric Terrell with the Super yeah. Chat says, no. oh, go ahead. Now, how do those records resonate within our culture? This is what I mean about it being, this is the intangible part that I'm talking about where people got to gravitate towards it and it becomes a thing. It's like where you hear something and it's like, oh, it's like, oh, no, no, no. That's, that's hip hop. That's an MC. I don't think she's had that moment yet, even though I can hear the progression towards that. 
Like you can make a hustling and not be like a great MC or be an MC yet. You can be a rapper and make a hustling. Well, who do you think has had a moment like that over the past three years? Because we're just in a different game now where, you know, radio and television is not there to really, you know, well, stamp well, a record. Well, in all honesty, you're making me question some things. And that's why I'm like, well, are you talking about um, uh, the merge and the fusion of the two? Because I will tell you, if, uh, in order for the merge and the fusion to happen, I think that lyrical miracle aspect of it is going to have to get addressed and conformed to some in order for that to happen. Yeah. Eric Terrell with the Super Chat says, Mookie Blaylock and Jordan are both ball players. Prince and T-Pain are both singers. Biggie and Too Short are both MCs. Levels are real. I agree. I, that's the conversation we're having. It's like they're, Jordan and Mookie Blaylock are both NBA players, and they're both guards. So shout out to Bookie Blaylock. That's a great reference right there. Atlanta in the house. So <laughs> what we're really speaking to at the end of the day, unless I'm missing something, is, is that we need a ranking system. That the MC and the rapper is the same thing. It's just about how they're ranked. Yeah, and I think we need a clear cut definition of what makes one that and what makes one not that. You know what I mean? Because it's clear since we want to talk about sports. It's clear that Scottie Pippen is a forward and not a guard. Even if he does play the point forward, he's a forward. Jordan is a guard. And they could t we could tell you why. You know what I mean? We can't really tell you why this person is a rapper and this person is an MC. But can you tell me why Scottie Pippen's a forward? Yes. Why? I could tell you because of the position. I mean, his height, his size, number one. No, nope, Magic was a six nine point guard. Penny yeah. was a six seven point guard. Yeah, and they were anomalies. Ben Simmons is six ten. Yeah, they were. They are anomalies. Nope, Luca six seven. Though. Luca's a he's a point guard. Yes, six seven. Yeah, same height as same height as Scotty. They're rare. They're rare, but for the most part, in that position, small forwards are around six seven to six nine. Can we say generally speaking? That's a fair assertion. And you know they have length. They're able to stretch the floor. Um, and you could tell that, again, Scottie Pippen, he's one of those late bloomers as far as, like, his growth spurt, kind of like Anthony Davis. He was a guard. You know what I mean? So No, I, I, no you're right. He yeah. was, like, 6'2", and then he, like, boosted up, like, right. four or five inches, like, when he was. And the only reason why Scottie Pippen is a forward is because he's 6'7", you know? And well, that, well, if he what... never would have grown, he would still be a shooting guard. I don't want to go too far on the tangent, but when you mm -hmm. brought up Scotty, I'm like, well, Mike, Scotty's actually the one who kind of changed the way we looked at all this stuff. That's so why I brought like, him up. So, so if you're saying it's time to start looking at it differently, then like maybe it is. And that's why I'm saying I'm open to that. But this is what I mean. If we're looking at it differently, that means we need to like really rank it and qualify. It. And that's part of why I was starting off the year with wanting to do the MC list. It's like, no, 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 let's rank it and really qualify it then. Right, and I think that's why I really want to get here and define it because people would say, okay, y'all got Lil' Kim at 25. She's not an MC. She's a rapper. But see, that's why I think it's great that we're going to do the lyricist list because, yes, that has a clear definition. You know what I'm yeah, saying? But Kim's not going to be in top 25 on the lyricist list. No, I'll tell you now. No. Isaac yeah. uh, with the Super Chat. Uh, he's just showing love. Appreciate the love, Isaac. Um Y'all got to go on Instagram and check out my guy Swig, man. He got some new uh, new music. He went to jump back on for an interview when he's dropping even more new music. Let me go ahead and uh, give people his Instagram too, man. Uh, I'll put it on the screen in a second. Let me get to these super chats. Uh, JB was here. says, it's in your approach to rhyming. <laughs> okay, well, let me say this. Like, Okay, so Dr. Dre's a rapper and not an MC. Well, what about the people who were writing for him? They're MCs, right? And their approach to rhyming and writing down his lyrics was MCing. Why doesn't that translate towards him? It's this is what I mean. So um, it's it's just like the hand of a painter, Mike. It's like well, everybody, everybody is is or, or sculpting. Everybody's making sculptures. In, in in Florence, Italy, but 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 Michelangelo's the only one that can make David. You get what I'm saying? I feel you. But do you? I feel you again. You're talking to skill levels. 
Right. There's a hand that comes with a craft. And when you have a certain hand, you get a certain title. You get a certain gravitas. Yes. It comes with it. So there's Raphael only a and Michelangelo of don't get looked at like regular ass artists because they're not regular ass artists. Their hands are super nice. So let me ask you this. What makes Talib Kweli an MC then? Hold on. I said according to people. I didn't say I necessarily had it that way. So you don't think Talib Kweli is an MC? I mean, what does he command and what do people gravitate towards? That's what I mean about, like, like tangibly, he checks all the boxes, but intangibly, he doesn't check the box to me because I'm never like, how often are we like, this is what I mean. You got to have moments. You got to have memories. You got to be part of this consciousness and this culture and this fabric to the point, like, that when you're being called the MC, that it's, like, really creating and evoking something, and the memory of you is something that people remember. What's his memory? I mean, he has a lot. I mean, he got the blast. Well, then tell it to me. That's what I'm saying. I can give, I can tell you so many about great MCs. That's what I mean. Mike, this is what I'm talking about, about it being intangible. I was sitting in my cousin's room on the floor while he was painting on the walls at about 11.27 p.m. when Unbelievable came on the Night Night Mix. I know exactly where I was and what was going on when I heard the record. That's what I'm talking about, those moments and those memories and those intangible things. MCs do that. Hmm. Again, that... I boom, mean, boom, because... boom. I still remember it in my head. I remember when the beat came on. I was like, me and... I remember because, like, he was up on the wall. He looked back at me. I'm looking at him. I'm like, you... Like, boom, 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 boom. So you don't think Talib Kweli is an MC? When did give me the moment? Give me the memory. It has to be that that's part of it. It's the intangible things. But I'm a, I remember when I was in in school suspension at West Charlotte and I was playing Illmatic mm -hmm. on my CD player. And the dude next to me tapped me and he was like, It ain't hard to tell us that shit, Coop. That's all he said to me. That was it. That's what I'm saying. It's like it, it. When you're touching people, that's part of it. You got to touch the people like on a certain level that moments like that happen. I remember a time that somebody was about to rob me on Beatty's Ford Road, Mike, but he heard me playing Tupac Ambitions as a rider. He was like, yo, he's like, Pac's that nigga. He's like, that nigga's home. So it's is, Project, is Project Pat an MC? Ooh, that's a good question, Mike. I think that's a good question. Yeah, yeah. You want to know it? You keep asking me. You tell me if you think Project Pat is an MC. You're more qualified than I because you're more thorough in their catalog than I am. Well, I think that MCs and rappers are the same thing. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's this grandioso, um, you know, uh, mystic no, no, no. Uh, aura around an MC. I think that, you know, rappers and MCs are the same thing. There are just levels to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, some people are a three and some people are a ten. No, it see, is this what is what it I is. mean, though. Like, like, for me, like, I love some Project Pat. I remember when I was chilling with my girlfriend in college at UNCG when we used to play Chicken Head and we used to, like, crack jokes on all the girls that we thought was, like, Chicken Heads on campus. We used to, like, have a Chicken Head like, you know, count, like, after we would hear the song and, like, laugh and joke. That's what I mean about, like, those intangible things. But I'm also from the South, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mad Max of the Super Chat says, LOL, Mike, J.J. Reddick, a great shooter. He is not a scorer. Uh, that's what I meant. Uh, I said that rapping is a skill, and MC has, uh, has to use his flow, delivery, rhyme scheme, or rapping projection of the voice to be an MC. So rappers don't have to use flow, delivery, rhyme schemes, or project their voice. I want to know the example of the person that you guys are saying doesn't have to do any of those things and we consider them making rap records. You know, I actually want to talk to a statistician <laughs> and I want to build out a formula where we can start plugging MCs into like the formula and giving them a ranking like the ATP does for players. You know, like part of how the rankings work with yeah. ATP, it's like, you know, if you won the title the year before, you don't get like points unless you like win the title again. You know what I'm saying? Like it works like that. Like, so it makes you have to stay consistent year after year after year. That's what I mean is like, you'll find 
that if we were to do it that way, a lot of people feelings would be hurt because a lot of people that y'all think is like top 20 or like top this, that, or the other, you're really talking about a few years they just had. <laughs> Jamar with a super chat says, besides moving the crowd, a great MC should also be able to freestyle and battle. That ensures being able to, um, to pivot and be charismatic. KRS1, Common, Snoop, etc. are MCs. Is Nori an MC? I always found Nori to be a rapper. Hmm. And okay. I love Nori as a rapper. Like, I was one of his big fans early on. Mad Max with the Super Chat. Oh, you know what? It's 50 Cent an MC. Because he does all those things. 50 does all the things. Yeah. Mad yeah, Max with the Super the Chat says... Uh, just like a great scorer has a uh, a shoot, uh, shoot post up dribble finish around the rim, etc. All those things are skills. When put together, you're a great scorer. Same with MCs. Again, I just think it's levels. Like you're just a great player, where the other person's just no, not no, as great. No, no, I think I think I think there might be something to what you're talking about, like with um with a skill level. So I'll give you an example. Do you know who Adrian Dantley is, Mike? Mm-hmm. It's great. Yeah, so he has a um, very comparable scoring average to a Kevin Durant and a LeBron James. But skill-wise, he's not those guys now, is he? Like, he can't do all the things that KD or LeBron can do. Mm -hmm. But his scoring average is comparable. And in his prime, his scoring average is better than both of theirs. Like, if we want to talk like prime years, you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. And so it's like, that's what I mean about, like, some of it's intangible, though. When you watch somebody like Kevin Durant score the ball, you're like, but he... Nobody think Adrian Daly a better scorer? LeBron's about to be... And I bring up LeBron, too, because LeBron's about to be the all-time leading scorer. And people are like, well, how did that happen? It's like, well, who's the best driver of the basketball that you ever saw? Right. <laughs> Jay Short with the Super Chat says, to play devil's advocate, people knock Black thought for his lack of charisma and star power. But no one would say he's not an MC. I think that's a very good point, Jay Short. Say what now? Oh, you didn't hear it? No. He said, um, to play devil's advocate, people knock Black thought for his lack of charisma and star power, but no one would say he's not a, an MC. He's got the records and he's got the performance, though. That's what I'm saying. He's got all the things. People don't say it because he's got all the things. It's like, well, what do you want? Um, like I look, I look at almost like being an MC. Like it's like being like a master plumber, mm -hmm. or it's like being like an emeritus at a university. It's like it's like that's why I keep on saying all the things that because that's how I was taught to look at it. Like you're an MC. Like when you do all the things, that's why I was even gonna say it's like well, if you told me that Big is more of a rapper than an MC on Ready to Die, I could see how some people would feel that way. But that nigga's MCing on Life After Death. <laughs> Again, we're speaking to skill levels. I think that he's doing both on both. Like an MC raps. You have to actually rap to MC. No, and, and I get that. And that's what I mean. It's like, oh, I, I have no problem with ranking it out. So that's what I mean. It's like, no, you, you might know, be changing the way that I look at it. I just feel like if we're going to make rapper a, a derogatory term, we need to just get rid of the term rapper altogether and just look at all of our hip hop um counterparts as MCs. I mean, we can do that, but can we, like, you know... Because there's a such thing as a whack MC, right? Can we... I mean, can we tear it out properly, then? And just be like, hey, well, he's not on that tier. So we, he doesn't really belong. Right. I mean, but even in the beginning... But that's why we're doing lists, though. In the beginning, it was... I mean, that was one of the first big breakout moments for Run DMC. Sucker MCs. There's a such thing as a whack MC, and what we've done... We've put the MC term on a level where there's no possible way you could be a whack MC. If you're a whack MC, you're a rapper. You're a rapper. Yeah. That's what we've done. So, <clears throat> with this newfound knowledge, now what do we do? I think the rappers and MCs are one and the same. Unless we want to just totally drop off the rapper tag altogether. But that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> we need to so, stop this whole, you know, Ludacris is a rapper and Nas is an MC thing. You know what I mean? I think that's inaccurate. Okay. So we need to start creating levels to this. 
Yeah, definitely. And that's why we started doing a list. Yeah. So, so you can kind of like kind of see what it looks like because you know this is kind of why I wanted to uh, I still work on the list. It's like kind of feel like we need a fifty, like just to kind of like yeah, we do. I mean, hip hop's fifty. Funny, so we might I'm not as well. being funny or tongue in cheek, but hip hop is fifty, and we need some uh, we need some blueprint plans mm-hmm. so that maybe we can speak on the levels and the tiers of it so that you hear it and that you understand so that when you see a certain class of MC that we're doing on the list and you see where we have like our one, two, three, four, five, six, well, we have things that like, you know, make sense to make you understand and see why that actually occurred as opposed to just like saying, well, this person raps, this person MCs because this person is more skilled. You know, I'll, I have always looked at it kind of like an honorary degree though. Yeah. I mean, I think most people do, and I think that that's why I wanted to kind of explore this because it seems like a cop-out sometimes in a way where it's like you put a list out there, you put a comparison out there. It's like, oh, that person's not a rapper. You know what I'm saying? They're an MC, or that person's not an MC. They're a rapper. Um, I want Before we get to the Super Chat, though, I know we got like 200-something people in here right now. I want everybody to go on the Instagram and follow uh, Swig, man. Like, he came on our show a while back. You want to get back on our show when he's dropping some new music. I got the the tag over here at the bottom of the screen. It's S-W-I-G-G underscore DiCaprio. So go follow him, man. He got some dope music, man. He's an MC, you know, for the people out there who look for lyrics and lyricism. Swig is an MC with his. Uh, Gary with the super chat says, like an old stereo system, rappers are the bass all the way up. Lyricists are the trouble, and the MC is the balance. Complete sound check in all boxes. Love the show. I love how poetic you guys are making this, too. Appreciate that love, Gary. Um, yeah, this is, this is a very poetic moment. I love it. I love the fact that everybody has their romanticized ideas about the definition. Uh, Jay Short says, I gotta stick up, uh, I gotta stick up for short. He is slash was a great storyteller and most of our favorite rappers can't make the ghetto or I want to be free. It's true. Do people view Too Short as a MC? Because Freaky Tales is like 11 minutes of storytelling. I think he gets, um, Framed as a rapper, oftentimes, yes. Why would you say that? No, I mean, I didn't say that. I was saying no, that. No, no, no. But why do you think people framed. would frame? Him I think as a some rapper. of that is the content. I think truthfully. a lot of that too. Just truthfully speaking, I think some of that's regional too, because it doesn't feel like any of the East Coast MCs get pegged as rappers and not MCs. <clears throat> you know, I was. It goes back to that um, art of storytelling conversation we were having about Big Boy and about Andre. Mm-hmm. There is something about the pimp player rhetoric that can be limiting. you right. to your expansion. No, it's true. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, um, Big Boy announced today that uh, Nick Daniel has passed. So rest in peace to him. Oh and, damn. You know, and big ups to their family in in this time. So. Um, 36 Chambers with the Super Chat says, with the $20 Super Chat, appreciate the love. He says, so how would this be uh, for a clear definition? There is no distinction between an MC and a rapper and that we just use the term MC for hip-hop artists and just rate based on the variety of factors like we do for all-time lists. I'm with that. And I think usually when people outside of the culture are talking about our MCs, they refer to them as rappers. Rapper Kanye West, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? And I think so if we're you, gonna, Hold on, so you feel like the outside's using rapper like a derogatory term too is what you're saying? Correct. So you're saying we need to eradicate rapper and just make it the MC? I think so. Okay. I'm cool with because that. I've never we been a fan have, of the word rapper anyway because it's too close to some other things. Because we even have, clearly, we even have negative uh, uh, definitions for rappers. Well, I just don't like, as somebody that is just familiar with uh, words, verbiage, English English language, I don't like some of the things word-wise that it's close to. Hmm. Uh, somebody saying Rigor Raw is 
Mike D, Rigoro is blocking people in the chat, bro. No timing. Uh, he's blocking people. Nah, man, don't be blocking people in the chat, yo. Who's um, getting blocked in the chat? Huh? Who's getting blocked in the chat? What happened? I don't know. It could be uh, spam. It's just one person saying it. I don't know. Um, see, y'all sitting here making me lose my train of thought. Let me get to the rest of the super chat, though. But no, I think that's kind of where we need to go with it. Mad Max says... Uh, I don't know who said Luda wasn't an MC, and Nas is. I mean, Nas got smoked by Luda on the Makes You Look remix. If Luda a rapper, <laughs> he cooked Nas. <laughs> Him cooking Nas is a bad look. I I don't know if I'm totally with y'all on the whole Makes You Look thing, but I feel it. I mean, I so think all is, of those verses are at a very this even is, level. This is what people have to also understand, too. And this is what I mean about ranking it. Okay, so your number one ranked player in the world, no rank, no, no number one ranked player in tennis has started a season and went undefeated. Except for, I think, um, no, Steffi Graf lost two matches that year. Mm -hmm. So, no. So, like, you understand, like, being number one ranked doesn't mean you can't be defeated. You understand? Like, the number one ranked player doesn't always win every major. Like, you watch it with Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods was the number one ranked player for, like, 11, 13 straight years. Now, he won about 11, 13 majors, but that's about a, a major a year average. You get what I'm saying? But based on how people view MCs versus rappers, an MC should always have the better verse than the rapper. That's why I think this is so problematic. I mean, if you're with the eradication of the word, you know, I, I'm, I'm feeling you about like just the <laughs> framework of it. I just believe in coming to more of a consensus about things in general. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. And I guess it starts here, man. Uh, I mean, I think that people can get rapper out of their verbiage because every time it seems that we use the term rapper, it seems to be in the negative light anyway. It doesn't sound like mm -hmm. anybody saying that rappers are uplifting the culture. So, facts. These are facts, too. Yeah. Uh, Jadarian with the Super Chat says, culture is historical um, changes over time. Nothing wrong with that. MC today has to embody a certain amount of elements, um, which relates to the skill, both and. You know, I think that, too, when we talk about the elements of hip-hop, even though the elements are the origin, I think that people who participate in rap music, hip-hop music, they're contributing to the elements in different ways than were traditionally, you know, put forth. Like, I think Kodak Black, he contributes to the elements. You know what I'm saying? Like, he does. Now, we don't view him as somebody that's going to be out there doing backspins or whatever, on some cardboard or whatever. But I think as an updated version of what hip-hop is, he contributes to the elements. He contributes to the culture. I would say it like that. No, I get what you're saying. He's a culture shifter. But even in those original elements, though, you know, things have changed. Like, I think we still do have breaking. But I remember when, when hip-hop would show all the elements right there on stage. When they took the DJ out of the group, like when it was no longer Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince and it was no longer DJ Polo and uh, Cool G Rap or Eric B and Rakim, that's mm -hmm. a big piece taken out of the culture. Now, one could say, hypothetically, once that happened and rappers start, you know what I'm saying, signing solo without the DJ in tow, that's some rapper shit, not some hip hop shit, right? What Gangstar did, that's some hip-hop shit. The DJ's there. No, I get what you're saying. You get what you're saying. You're saying if the MC is like keeping it more hip-hop and pieces are being removed from the core fabric of it, then why are we even throwing the word kind of like rapper around the way that we are? Yeah. Because here's the thing. You know what I thought about? Really? And this is why I brought up KRS-One, and this is a conversation I wanted to forge earlier. Well, on my favorite KRS-One album, like it's not down considered to be down with Boogie Down Production. Well, the two lead singles on there are MCs act like they don't know, mm -hmm. and rappers are in danger. Are in danger. Yeah. 
I think one of the things that I'm saying too is if this was about the culture, there never would have been a moment where an artist got signed without the DJ being signed as well. Or there would always be a DJ attached to an MC because the DJ is the cornerstone and the first element of hip hop. The DJ should have never been left out in the cold if this was about, you know, culture. I mean, you know, you know, it was funny. It's funny that you say that. You know, and this is what I mean about what the glove was saying about how the group process worked, not the sidebar too far. Mm hmm. Well, DJ Premier is one of the people that helped get samples for KD3. Like some of those samples and the stuff that That's you're hearing, dope. he's the one that got those records. So the DJ was involved with KD3. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you're talking, but part of the reason why Nas is looked at as an MC is because he's somebody that's always been somebody who's looked upon as respecting and understanding all elements of the culture and bringing them together and pushing them forward. Yeah. There is a piece of that that matters that's intangible and how yeah. people view you in that light matters. That's all I was saying. I'm not yeah. trying to quibble with you about it. I'm just telling you that faction of it, it really, really matters. It's a reason why he sounds so good on beat breaks. I mean, damn near anybody, you know what I'm saying, who's an MC does because when those beat breaks come on, you just turn into the MC that you are. Like, uh, they <laughs> right. What, what, uh, Jizzle say? He said, uh, said he couldn't rap over the drummer's beat. It was on, uh, Wu Tang Forever. You know what I'm talking about. It'll come to me in a second. Somebody in the chat, I'm sure knows. You're what talking I'm talking about, about. Hold on. I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, about yeah. Uh, Jamar with the super chat says, today's artists have gotten away from, uh, the core drivers, uh, that Coop is describing. How do you, how do we get artists to go back to the basics? Well, they have to they see the basics uh, benefit them. So this is what I mean. Like, the things that matter then don't matter anymore. And so, you know, you do have to update some things. And I think what happens when you update some things, it opens up the gate for people that gatekeepers don't like to let in. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't want a Kodak to be considered an MC. It's true. I mean, am I wrong when I'm saying that? No, no, I agree with you. You know, it's, it's, it's just the way that it is. So they look at somebody and be like, Cole, they'd be like, oh, no, 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 let him in. Kendrick, oh, no, 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 let him in. Be like, what about Kodak? No, 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 You stay right there. Stay right there. You rap. You rap. Well, before You're we rap. get out of here, though, I, I found You're something rapping very rapping interesting. Rap. Yeah. I found stay something very somebody. interesting today when we were doing the uh, station head and we were playing nothing but posse cuts or whatever. And uh, somebody in the station had, I think it was Free, shout out to Free in there, was like, <sighs> kind of pointed out, I think it was that Dreamville song with the baby where uh, Kendrick did the hook. It pointed out the fact that Kendrick kind of don't be participating in these posse cuts like that. Now, he's on one train, and of course, you know, you got uh, Black Lip Bastard or whatever uh, that was on Ab Soul, and that was a while back. But we don't really get Kendrick on too many posse cuts. Was Control like the last one? And it seems like when, when there's an opportunity to rap alongside of Cole, Kendrick seems to be singing. And so people were in the chat saying that Kendrick ducks the opportunity to get on these posse cuts with credible MC. Does that feel like a, a valid statement? I mean, and what I, I guess where I wanted to go with it on our list, do we need to factor in the heavyweights that some of these people on the list have had to go bar for bar with? That's why collaborations matter, and that's why collaborations is on the list of the criteria that I was doing for the top 20 MCs. That's why Method Man is so great. Look at how many times he's collaborated people with people and come out with either the star hook or the star verse or the star moment. Think about how many times he's done that in a room full of it's Wu Tang Clan. I'm Even outside of that, though, Coop, you got no, no. You I'm got just, we can start with Wu Tang yeah. Clan, and we can keep on working down the line. You no matter who you put them in a room, and you can put them in a room full of writers and MCs. Yeah, and he can come out in first place. 
He can do whole projects with the likes of Redman, you know, uh, be on a feature with Biggie, Tupac, <laughs> Jizza at his height. I mean, who has Method Man not shown up on a? How about you know, this? Incredible. The only list. person out rapping the Jizza on Liquid Swords is Method Man on Shadow Boxing. You Straight understand up. that, right? Straight it's the up. only time the Jizza gets out rapped. Matter of fact, yeah. Mike, it might be the only time he gets out rapped in like the whole gap of like all the <laughs> verses that he did from like '93 to like '95. They're not out rapping him on any record except for Shadow Boxing. And his verse on Shadow Boxing is epic. So it's it wasn't stupid. like he dialed one in and Method Man got him. No, no so like <laughs> like those moments, man, I told you it's like, no, like that whole like eye for an eye thing where Prodigy and Raekwon and Nas were on the same record. No, that matters. When has Kendrick been in a situation like that? Reservoir Dogs matters. So Appalled matters. The Symphony we played that the matters. Day I Shot Your Remix yeah. matters. No, yeah. no, no. It matters how you perform in those moments. Ill John Son. Blaze. Yeah, we played that today, too. Ill Son with the Super Chat says, an MC is about uh, the culture and the art of rapping. A, a MC on. can want to uh, sell records, but still respect the art. A rapper is just rapping to sell records with no respect for the culture. Who is that? You know what I mean? Right. Who, who is out here rapping just to rap with no respect for the culture? My thing is, if an MC cared that much, they would be attached to a DJ. If you have a rapper out there or an MC out there, then you can't tell me who their DJ is. How much of the culture do they really care about? Like, watch for the hook. Thought process. Thought process. Pro thought process was when we realized it's like, oh, we have two elite MCs down here in Atlanta. Like two elite elite MCs down here in Atlanta. Oh yeah, two. Well, I would say Highly shit. Elite. I would say even um, get up, get out. But you're right. Thought process. No, no, no. Really... That's the record. Thought process of the record where we're like, man, we got two guys. Down here in this city, I'll that was Dre's coming anyway. out party right there. That's what I mean. Like CeeLo's yeah. coming out party is get up, get out. Yeah. Dre's coming out party is thought process. Yeah, Leroy Green with the super chat says, "What up, Mike and Coop? Just wanted to say peace to my guys. Uh, the Rock is in the building. The difference, MC and a rapper, like A2HH versus B Dot's list. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Appreciate the love, Mad Max with the super chat says that's because on the posse cut." You're showing your skills bar for bar, and Dot's lyrical ability is more on an imaginary and description, not great schemes. I mean, one train, uh, there's four guys with better verses than him. Hmm. I was actually thinking, and I've said this plenty of times, Kendrick doesn't have one guest verse, in my opinion, that's as good as J. Cole's Pray verse on Jesus Peace. Hmm. Jay Short with the Super Chat says, mm. I've said it before. I dock mm. uh, Kendrick heavy for ducking the Black Hippie album. At, at best, that was corny. <laughs> at worst, he's scared. I mean, even on, even though I love his verse on Black Lip Bastard, but J-Rock has the best verse on there. J-Rock like, came this. in there this and went clean I mean. up. Like, like, this is what I mean. Think about this. Like, Wayne, like, peak Wayne. Ross is going back and forth with him on the Carter Four, like on John. Mm -hmm. like, that's not Pete Ross. That's Pete Wayne. Ross is going back and forth with him. Ross has multiple records with Nas. I think it's like, interesting in this era, which is a very collaborative, heavy era, that Kendrick doesn't have these collaborations. Like, Rakim doesn't have the collaborations because in that era, you know, collaborations just weren't heavy. This is the heaviest collaborative era that we've ever seen in hip hop. And it's interesting the fact that we can't pull out the moments where he actually rapped alongside of these individuals and showed his dominance, showed that he is the the premier MC of this era. No, no, no. That's like, no, no, no. Car Carter Four Wayne is still peak Wayne. It may not be peak Wayne in terms of notoriety, but I'm very, very clear about his rapping skill on that album. Six foot, seven foots on that album. I believe She Will is on that album. No, his rapping skill is still very much there and intact on the Carter Four. I'm very clear on what I'm saying. Uh, Jermaine Johnson with the Super Chat says, uh, how about we make every year, uh, I'm sorry, how about we make every rapper freestyle over the funky drummer <laughs> loop for three minutes straight before qualifying them with the MC badge? I'm with it. 
<laughs> or putting their MC in levels at a one as opposed to an eight or nine. Uh, Clayton is asleep with the super chat. Says Eastern Conference All Star with um, Sky Zoo, Benny, Conway, Elzai, and Westside is one of my favorite recent posse cuts. That shit was dope. Yeah. Esquire with the super chat says Ghost also outwrapped the genius on investigative reports. And I'd like to see y'all uh, use the same criteria you use on your MC scorecard for your top 50 list. Huh. We should run it through there, too. Or we should maybe make the scorecard the top 50 somehow. Put it in the book. So, uh. um, it's an idea. But, let's look at this real quick. Because... Our list, what are we looking at? I want to look at, on our list, all the people. Who has Kendrick actually collaborated with? Okay, hold on. Let's let's go down that list. Like, No, I think what's what's important, see, this is what I mean. It's like, well, we know what he hasn't done. Let's look at what the other people have done. Have done. That's what I'm saying. So when you go to... Nas let's and just, Jay, we ain't even got to go there. Let's not do that. Because like those guys have collaborated with damn near everybody on this list. Right. They have. But go to, um, let's say, well, think about it. Well, Ice Cube, Ice Cube's done stuff with, from everybody from like Scarface to Lil John. Yeah. You and know what I'm saying? Think about it. He's on Hand of the Dead Body on the Diary, but he's also on Crump Juice. Yeah. A few times. Like he has two, he has three stellar verses on Crunk Juice. I think three. he has the best verse on that uh, on the grand finale. Either him or Ti. I think either him or Nas. But yeah, I love Nas's I verse agree. too. I would say That's... I would say Cube Ti Nas, and then I'm going um, Jada and Bumby. You want to know what's crazy? Is that that's one of my favorite Ice Cube bars. It's on uh, on um, Grand Finale. Get money, get paid. You can beat that shit, even if the DA is a piece of shit. <laughs> that's affirmational. They were going in, man. No, they snapped yeah. on there. Q, that's a great Nas posse and cut too. Yeah. Speaking of posse cuts, yeah. Think about this: Bun B, Ti, Nas. We played that today. Ice Cube, you played that today? Yeah, we played Should've. that today. It's a banger. Yeah. Ice Cube, Nas, and T.I. brought their A game. Like, you could tell T.I. understood he, who he was on these on this song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He came with his style and his lyrics. Uh, Mad Max yeah. of the Super Chat says, uh, I've heard Cole outrap Pusha, Saha, Sean, Ye on the record. Uh, I heard him outrap Benny. I heard, I heard him outrap Dot G on the Jeezy record. But he didn't really rap on there. At least Dot didn't. Um, made records uh, with Drake. Another verse on the Jodeci. LOL. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We know. Yeah. We know. Yeah. We know. Okay. So. We know. All right. So we're, we're not even going to go with the Pac and Biggie thing. We already know that. KRS. He's KRS rapping pretty much KRS is the rock him era. So he's not like a super big collaborator. Gotcha. So Snoop. He's rapping. Everybody. 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 LL, he made a point of having posse cuts. He's damn hold on, hold on. Everybody. LL literally made sure that when he came back, that he got people involved mm -hmm. to let people know that he was current. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, so there's Red Man, there's Method Man, yeah. Cannabis, DMX, Prodigy, <laughs> yeah. Fat Joe, Foxy Brown, Keith Murray. That's just on two records. Yeah. That's just two records. Yeah. No, no. I gave and you he that. He made Ill Bomb. Scarface. Face got, I mean, Face got Cube, got Nas, got Jay, most notably. Exactly. Like, and he's got Jay and Beans. Nas in multiples. Beans. He's made a bunch of records with Jay. He's made, no, he's made more with Nas, I think, than with Jay at this yeah. point. Because think about it, Nas is on Deeply Rooted with Rick Ross. Yeah. Ross and Jay, I mean, Ross and Bean, I mean, Ross and Nas and Face is on Deeply Rooted together on the, uh, with Zero on the Do What I Gotta Do joint. Um, Beans and Brad, we're gonna make an album together. Yeah, oh, Mac yeah. and Brad on the truth. Yeah. Um, he's worked with. Hold on, he's worked with Pop. He's worked with Short. Yeah. He's worked with UGK. Yeah. 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 It matters. I mean, 
Kanye, yeah. he's worked with everybody. We everybody next. Other. Ghostface. Well, he's in the Wu Tang. He's in the Wu Tang clan. <laughs> Raekwon has worked with everybody. And he's in the Wu Tang clan. And he's in the Wu Tang. You want to know what's clan. crazy? If it weren't for Method Man, he would actually be in conversation for greatest collaborator ever. His collaborator, he doesn't have a cream or an ice cream like type of hook that he contributed to where it's just like, oh, well, that's just too epic. Right. Like, right. you understand, Method Man is the star of ice cream. Yeah, he is. Like, ice cream, not cream, ice cream. Lil Wayne's rapped with everybody. Doesn't have a verse on ice cream and he's the star. Lil Wayne is rapped with everybody. Everybody. Uh, Common. Hmm. He's done a lot of joints. He's got he Black has. Thoughts, got Most, he's got Talib, he's got Nas. That's high level stuff. He has the best verse on Respiration. Um, yeah. Um, trying to think who else. I mean, when you're, when you're consistent. Him, yeah. Haven't him, him and T.I. done a joint together? Mm hmm. When you're consistently yep. rhyming with, with Talib, Most, and Black Thought, though. The Game. He's got a yeah. joint with The Game. He's got a couple joints with The Game, I think, actually. Yeah. Yeah, he's got Jesus, Peace, and Angel. And he's um, made a record with Nas as well. Yeah, got the Nas record. Yeah. Um, he did that, that, that Hot 97 freestyle with KRS-One. That counts to me. Go up the Hot 97 and freestyle with KRS-One. KRS, that okay. always counts. Okay. It counts as an album. Oh, and he did make a name for ourselves with cannabis. At cannabis that is tight. He was going back and forth with a machine named cannabis in nineteen ninety seven. Yeah, no, no, no. Calm gets it in. I'm trying to think. He's done some other stuff too. Like he's um I feel like there's some stuff from Calm that we're actually missing in terms of like, Oh yeah, I'm sure we crap. are. And now here we get to Kendrick. Well, we we skipped Chuck D, but Well, I mean that's from the eighties era where there weren't a lot of, you know, right, collaborations, right. so and now um, we're at Kendrick. So now we're at Kendrick. Right. Now, where does his collaborative efforts, you know, even... First of all, he's he's got some collaborative efforts. He's not on hardly any posse cuts. He's on Nostalgia with Kendrick. Mm -hmm. I mean, with Pusha. Yep. Great he's appearance. on Control, obviously. Yep, with Jay Electronica and... He's, um, he's, he's on Big the One Shaw. Train record, obviously. But outside of those three, where are the big, like... Stuff like outside of his project. And he what do really you think he had the best verse on any of those? No. I told you at best nostalgia is a draw. He set him up. Throwing punches in his room. If he cries, he cries. Like Doughboy the Trade. Come <laughs> on. He's setting him up. It's a West Coast dude like Doughboy. This is Simon Says. Simon Red. Like he's literally setting him up. He's like doing West Coast. Pusha T is using West Coast themes in his verse to send to Kendrick for Kendrick to get off on. Mm -hmm. It's a tie at best. Mad Max with the Super Chat says, heard him out rap Wale on my boy uh, Dope feature um, with, um, with Royce. Uh, Cole sidebar, Wale I've on heard, Wale's first album. He said, sidebar, I've heard Big Sean go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Royce and more MCs than K-Dot, and I think that's fair. I think Big Sean has gone toe to toe with more credible MC talent. He's in good music's camp, so he's had to. Yeah. Just by default, just by default of being in the good music camp, he's been around Chains and Pusha and Common. Saha. And like him and Saha Sa were brought into the game together. I mean, people forget that. But when uh, when Kanye did that good music freestyle back on uh, what was that that BET Hip Hop Awards, the Cipher. It was Common, Ye, Big Sean, and Sahai were the new guys. Uh, Esquire with the Super Chat says, Push through, Talib, uh, Control, Nostalgia, They Ready. That was uh, Crit and Cole. It's right. like, I'm on. That's Cole, Crit, etc. Black Lip Bastard, etc. Just the tip of the iceberg. Okay. Okay, so that was like, you know, like... A million like years big, ago. Big did more than that in 95. <laughs> and he didn't have an album. Okay. They're going to say we're being unfair to K-Doc. No, but... no, no, no. I just said something that was factual. Big did more work than that in 95 without an album. Tell me that I'm wrong. He's on fucking problem with, uh, with Drake. And, uh, you know, Poetic Justice with Drake. Now, I'm just going to say this, man. Poetic Justice is his shit. That's it what is. I'm saying. Not it your is. stuff. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Not your stuff, fam. Well, that was ASAP shit, fucking problem. And I think Drake has the best verse in that song. He does. I do. He does. 
Now I'm honestly, I'm obviously not let saying Drake is a better rapper than Kendrick, just but let it go. I think he had the better verse. And I think they place everybody on that song perfectly because by the time you get past the second verse, for the most part, the, the DJ switching it up. But I do think that Kendrick might have had the most memorable part on the song. But if we want to go bar for bar and verse for verse, I think Drake might have had the best verse on that song. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of those other collaborations you're talking about, Esquire, were very, very early. Um, you know, even the Busta Rhymes collaboration that's on ELE, too, that sounds like Kendrick with the fade. So we, anything, do we oh, have oh, anything oh, oh, oh. after how, how Good Kid, Mad City? How about this? show me the where's the classic at you get what i'm saying like where's the where is it where's the verbal intercourse with the classic feature where's the i4 and i where's the fast life where's the more money more murder like where is it like if he's that dude for this era like show me like you see when you list these songs off the esquire just listed off it's like well, where is it at where is it at the mad isms <laughs> where is it at first of all mad isms it's a great song by Channel Live. Yeah. And KRS went great crazy song. on there. Great song. KRS destroyed that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rampage. Featuring LL Cool J from EPMD's record. Headbanger with Red Man. Like, I don't know, man. Where? That's what I'm saying. Like, like where? where, where, where the features matter. Now, go. Now, now, who's right up under Kendrick on our list? Well, that would be Method Man. Now, go to Method Man's feature list. <laughs> We're not going to do that. We don't have that much right. time. Uh, Prodigy. Yeah. Black well, he's got, I mean, no, no, no. Well, just on his album, just on the infamous, just on the first album, well, Ray, Ghost, Q-Tip, and Nas are on there. Yeah. That's on the first album. Yeah. Method Man is on album number two. So think of just those five guys right there. Kendrick's never like like been in the room with five guys like that ever. Am I wrong? No. I mean... Who you're rapping around and that competition and that, you know, if you're able to, if you're able to show your dominance over a great crop of MCs, that just shows where you stand in your era. And it's very tough. It feels like everything you were judging Kendrick on is just isolated stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like isolated albums, isolated songs. And Very when you special, look at what, a lot of special treatment. Yeah, and when you look at what Cole has done in relation, it's like Cole will jump on stick, you know what I'm saying? And and do his thing. Smash. Yeah, and he'll jump on uh Johnny P's caddy. It's like he's showing you what he looks like, not just to his era, but the new crop of MCs that are coming in or the newer crop. I'll rhyme with uh, J.I.D. I'll rhyme with Earth no, Gang. It's like I'll when, rhyme with, uh, you know, Benny. You know what I'm saying? It's like when Kobe or KD pull up to the record, it's like, oh, no, it don't matter if it's organized or not, fam. Exactly. There's nobody better than me at this. Yeah, and for whatever <laughs> reason, he doesn't <laughs> pull do up these any court. Right, but that's what I mean. So, Rucker, it's like, no, 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 it doesn't matter. It can be an NBA court. Be, no, 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 you know I shoot like this on any court, right? Right, You know right. who I am, right? You know you know who I am. You know what I play like on any court? Mm -hmm. You know you can put me on any court and I'm a ball. For me, rappers almost have like, I wouldn't call them limitations, but you can't just put them on any court and ask them to ball at the same level that they ball in the confines of their home court. 36 Chambers says something on his super chat I really want to highlight. He says Eminem has more known features than Kendrick. These are facts. Eminem's and not afraid of the truth. smoke. And that's the truth. Just off the Royce. Just off just off Royce. Yeah. Just off Royce. Just I mean, off the multiple joints with Royce. Even when M got on that uh that anthem, the Sway and Tech joint. Um he had know, the best patiently waiting. Even though I'm not a huge patiently waiting fan, I am a fan of Don't Push Me though. He's on both of those. He's not afraid of the smoke. He's on Renegade. You know, that's Jay Z. He's on EPMD too. He on is. KD too. Yeah. He's not afraid of the smoke. Yeah. No, yeah. he has no problem. He's on. Um, I mean, I told you. He's Mark, robbed he's on the, the red man. You know what I'm he's saying? In, like, he's, a, he's he's in the cipher with thought and with most. He did that too. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. You're in the cipher with thought and with most. Yeah. Jay Short with the super chat says, "I understand if you feel others uh, don't fit on your project." 
but you can't be any you uh you can't be on anyone else's. You can't give them a sixteen. Yeah, it's strange, especially after what we saw Wayne do at the height of you know his fame, because nobody was bigger than Wayne at that period. <laughs> Forget the height of his fame. Wayne just had a better feature run in the last two years than Kendrick's ever had. Even with, um, you know, Jay-Z at the height of his fame. Like, one of the bigger things that adds to Jay-Z's aura in that time period we talk about is his feature run, man. Like, he was everywhere. Kendrick needs a real, real feature run. I'm sorry. He does. He we got him ranked one. very high. We have him ranked very high. We have him ranked very high. And that just speaks to how incredible his albums have been on this Section 80, Good Kid, Mad City, To Pimp a Butterfly, Damn Run. You know what I mean? But how? Yeah. Esquire with the $20 We might have to chat. put him in the ringer, Mike. We might have to, I'm sorry, Esquire. We might, have to put, we might have to put Kendrick in the ringer and like take him down the list. You know what I mean? Put yeah. him next, like, like we have him. Who do we have him between? We have him between Chuck D and uh, Method Man. Might need to address that. You want to, um, because somebody in the chat said that, you know, he's not better than Method Man, but maybe we should test that. I don't know. I mean, we can address it now if you want to after you get done with the Super Chats. Okay, let's do it. Um, Esquire with the Super Chat. He says, uh, Regency bias is blinding y'all classic features um, are lighting in the bo- lightning in the bottle moments. How many MCs have a verbal intercourse and an eye for an eye in their catalog? Y'all are moving the goalposts to keep the dot. great ones too. <laughs> so y'all are moving the goalposts to keep dot a Shit. tier below the golden era no, MCs. I, no, we're not. A Z has a has, has a verbal intercourse moment. It's called life's a bitch on Illmatic. You feel what I'm saying? It's like so do not tell me that I'm asking for too much. A Z, we ain't even talked about A Z nowhere on this list, and so it's like no, you're capable as a collaboration artist of creating those moments. Method Man got verse of the year for the last verse on How High. No, you're capable of creating those moments. Ain't nobody trying to hear that either. Jamar with the Super Chat says, Kendrick is Floyd Mayweather. He picks the right fights at the right time. You know how we feel about Floyd, really, at the end of the day. It's like great record, but we all, you know, we know. I love Floyd, but yeah, I I can understand that. And and, you know, I love Floyd, but nobody thinks Floyd is the greatest. Do you think Floyd's the greatest boxer ever? Well, it's and he like, check me. the record, check the record. It's like, oh, you know, check how you bob and weave, you know, outside of the ring. It's just hard for me to say that anyone who's not a heavyweight is the greatest fighter ever. It ain't even about that, Mike. Competition matters. Like, part yeah. of why Ali is the greatest to me is that, like, he beat six Hall of Fame boxers. There are six boxers in the Hall of Fame, and he beat them. Yeah. No, real. Homeboy Blaze with the Super it's not Chat imaginary. Says. Uh, homeboy uh, Blaze with the super chat says, "Schoolboy Q has a better feature run than K Dot. He does. Schoolboy is a shit. And you know what? It's a problem that him. I mean, it's a problem that Kendrick being as high as he is on everyone's list doesn't have a better feature run than you know Schoolboy. It because Schoolboy and ASAP, I love when they collaborate together." I don't think there's this anybody what, I could say that about with K-Dot, where I'm like, yo, I love when he gets this, together with them, you know? This is what I keep trying to tell you about AZ. Does Kendrick have a phone tap with somebody? Those things matter. Does he have a phone tap? I can't think of one. Does he have a life's a bitch? I can't think of one. But AZ has that, though, right? He does. And the nigga A nice on the mic, right? Yeah. Okay. You feel what I'm Kendrick saying? got those albums, though, man. But, but but listen to how many got, like, like you know, that's not <clears throat> Impact, Method Man or Kendrick? Kendrick. Live performance. Method Man. I don't know, man. That might not be as, I, I might have spoken too soon on that. That's close. Let's call it a time, be fair. Lyric slash storytelling. Storytelling and lyric that might go Kendrick. I would tell you Method's still the better lyricist, but Think Kendrick so? is the superior storyteller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those entendres and all that shit that we bought J for, Method Man does the same thing. He does. I'll tell you that's a tie to me. Classic album slash songs. I would tell you that might be a tie again because the albums belong to Kendrick, but the songs belong to Method Man. It does. Longevity of albums and songs. I think that might be a tie again. 
I think the albums are Kendrick, but I think the songs are Meth. Okay. Classic collaborations. <laughs> well, that's Meth, <method>, man. <laughs> Career longevity quality. That's Meth, man. Five year break hurts, man. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah. Voice. <laughs> Method Man. Now, guess who just won that? Sounds like Method Man, man. Point. He just won the last three. Kendrick won for Impact. Then it went tie, 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 meth, meth, meth. This is this is what I'm talking about. It's like Method Man is one classic album away from being top ten. Leroy Green with the Super Chat says, I was the biggest hater until some Kendrick fans went crazy on me about Overly Dedicated. So he did something right early on that stuck. Yeah, I mean, no. Kid Nobody's taking dope. that away from him. No. No, Kid just dope as hell. Oh, um, yeah, sounds like. He's, he's really the only modern MC that's cracking, like, the top 20. Him and, like, you know. So, but I don't know. So now, Prodigy. Because we just moved Kendrick down to 18 and moved Method Man up. Let's do the Prodigy one. Okay, impact. Kendrick. Live performance. Kendrick. With you on that. Lyric slash storytelling. Kendrick. That's prodigy to me. Storytelling? Yeah. No, I'm with Kendrick on the storytelling. At least. Then it's a tie because he's not a better lyricist than P. Hmm. Where the verse? Show me the verses. <laughs> I can give you plenty of prodigy verses. <laughs> I shot your remix. Pick a verse on Quiet Storm. Shook Ones Part Two. Pick a verse on Give Up the Goods. Nighttime Vultures. Hell on Earth. Godfather Part oh, the Three. the bands are gonna Still kill shining. you. Still shining. Pick a verse. Pick a verse. Drop a gem on them. Show Jermaine, me the Kendrick verses. Jermaine Johnson with the super chat says, "Push us nostalgia features." Kendrick's moment. Yes. They say, I'm sorry. Kendrick was a moment. His best feature and it's still a tie. Show, Shor- me the, show me them verses that Kendrick got like that. He's not a better lyricist than Prodigy. Jay Shore with Super Chat says, honestly, it's hard to enjoy Kendrick's music lately because he doesn't seem to like uh, or enjoy and appreciate hip hop. It's like the um, the waiter at a five star restaurant throwing your food at you. Um, <laughs> Leroy Green with the Super Chat says, Coop, context matters. Which is why Jay's entendres are better than Method Man's. Method Man uses them when they're not necessary. Jay is using them better. Okay. Even if he's using them better, it's not by much. So, well, I mean, you don't think that um, Auntie's Diaries is better than um, you know, any of those verses, or his verse on Phil, or Ma I Sober, or. Say it to me. Uh, I can say all the verses that you, that I just Mad named. Mad City. Hold on. Pick a verse. I'll say the verse. See, you're picking Control. verses that you can't even rap, so they're not that great or that epic <laughs> where you'd be able to rap them. Look so inside my, my pocket, girl. Civilized, civilized. We cook the shake. Move the weight across the shook, across the tri-state. Them shook niggas be the crooks about the juke type. Special deliver shit and shots through your act bigger. My infamous mob get on their job. The truth gets revealed like you W far. Some shiesty New York niggas thirsty for shatter. You shining, you get your jewels taken with your heel sweater. Like you feel what I'm saying? I can recite it off the top of my fucking head like it happened yesterday because it's legendary. That's what legendary lyricists do. Start spitting his shit out the way that you spit Andre shit out, Mike. Well, look inside my parking garage and see if it collides with every person. You've done that so many times on the show. Pick another verse. (laughs) Pick another verse. Uh, That's what I'm saying. (laughs) Gary with the Super Chat says, Kendrick is an all-time great, but is a bit overrated. He is being pushed for some reason. Um, That love that he gets should go to someone from QB. Carry on. Shout Lyrics to and storytelling. I'll give you a tie. I'll give Kendrick the storytelling over Prodigy. Okay. But that's not by much, too, because tri- Prodigy done Trife Life, yep. fucking Nighttime Vultures. Like, no, Prodigy's a pretty dope storyteller. He's not Kendrick, but he's definitely a better lyricist than Kendrick. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next one. Classic albums and songs. That goes to Kendrick. Again, because the songs are Prodigy, but the albums are Kendrick. Okay. Can you say? I'll, and, I'll give you that. Actually, you want to know what? No, that's not Kendrick. That is Prodigy. Kendrick don't have nothing better than the infamous or hell on earth. I don't know, bro. Good kid, Mad you think City. Good kid, Mad City. You think Good Kid, Mad City's better Add than the infamous or hell on earth? And show I, me where. 
I think Good Kid, Mad City, and To Pimp a Butterfly. Definitely. I think To Pimp a Butterfly is better than Hell on Earth, and I think Good Kid, Mad City is better than The Infamous. Hold on. If Good Kid, Mad City is better than The Infamous, you're saying that that's a top 10 rap album then? And you're not saying I don't saying think that. The Infamous is a top 10 rap album. Where do you think? Where do you have the infamous, Mike? Like it's not top ten. I mean, it's a Mike, whole another discussion. But no, yeah. no, no, Mike. Where do you have the infamous? Thing? I mean, Reasonable Doubt beat it. So yeah, but Reasonable Doubt's art is a top twenty rap album. Yeah. So if it's a top twenty, I would say the infamous is maybe top thirty ish or something like that. And where do you have Good Kid, Mad City? That's what I'm saying. Because the infamous is way better than Good Kid, Mad City, Mike. We could Patreon, Patreon on that if you want to. Yeah. You want a Patreon? Yeah, we could do that. Mike, you understand how bad you're about to lose? I want to see it. Survival of the... Mike, I just, I'm just going to submit something to you because I'm going to offer you a chance to not get blown out. Survival of the fittest, I4 and I, give up the goods. No, I want you to go pull up Good Cat Mad City and pull up Infamous and look at the order of the track listing. Mm-hmm. And like understand that it's like all of your great records, it's like are about to lose like to like all of the great records on the Infamous. Like Money Trees is going to lose. Because Money Tree's going to have to go up against I-4 and I or give up the goods, and it's not better than either one of those records. And that's the highlight of the album. I don't know, man. I, we'll Patreon that. But see, the thing Think is, Maxi man... Freestyle's beating Survival of the Fittest? Well, the other thing is, though, is the fact that these are his albums, whereas, like, you know, those albums are more Mob Deep albums and not, you know, Prodigy. Prodigy's solo. got solo material. And Prodigy does. didn't take a five-year break, and Prodigy was sick and didn't take a five-year break. You're right. right. Hmm. I'm going to say that again. That man was sick and didn't take a five-year break. I think everything we hold Kendrick for high, <clears throat> high is concerned with the albums, right? So, Right. But yeah, I'll people seem to say we, people we seem can to say tie P on got. the albums and the songs. He doesn't have the songs over, the, over P, though. He okay, doesn't. okay. Because he doesn't have one shook ones or, 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 or quiet storm level, like not one. No, you're right. All Right might be his most... Um, that is noteworthy not record. And I told that you when he was announced for the so Super Bowl, far. I was like, he's gonna perform all right. And he did. That's so well, he didn't have anything else to perform. Yeah. So what's the Long, next? Longevity of album slash songs. That's prodigy. It is prodigy. Classic collaborations. That's prodigy. That's prodigy. Career longevity quality. Hmm. Fascinating. It's tough for him to win that with that five year break. It really exactly. is. Exactly. Especially when the other guy had sickle cell and kept performing. Yeah. Jay Short with the super chat says So, what has Kendrick done that uh, Freddie Gibbs hasn't done? Can Freddie break the top 25 with another SSS or Alfredo? I said that when he dropped SSS. I said, what's the difference between Freddie's four album run and Kendrick's four album run? And people looked at me like I was smoking rocks. <laughs> hey. People looked at me like I was one of Freddie's customers or something. Like, Shout out to uh, uh, Mr. Terrell with the $25 super chat. He says, Coop, um, you was all facts when you said reasonable doubt. It makes sense looking at how uh, classic, I'm sorry, how drastic a change that the Hawaiian Sophie versus Reasonable Doubt. I mean, you know, I never really thought about it, but that whole Carolina Blue Kicks, hottest nigga on our block, used to Willie really Bicycle since I was six. That's so camp low. That's that's Geechee Sway feeling right it. there, man. Feeling it. The whole flow on feeling it. Well, yeah, I mean, they actually recorded feeling it. It's out there on YouTube. You can look it up. I actually like their version of feeling it better, personally. Because it's better. Yeah, which is crazy to say, but yeah. I love Camp Low. I'm not a huge fan of feeling it uh, on Reasonable Doubt. It's one of those records that I skip up. Ooh, I love. But see, the funny part is that was one of the few records that they actually played here in Atlanta when Reasonable Doubt was out, and I loved it until I heard the album. I just love everything else on the album better. You know what I mean? It's not that it's a bad song. It's just I like Dead Presidents better. You know what I'm saying? Like I like riding <laughs> out the feeling it. I like riding the feeling it. So yeah. I think the hook in the track are more standout than he is on that song. Once again, this is why I have voice last. Voice, Prodigy or Kendrick? Oh, that's Prodigy. So, Kendrick won for Impact Live Performance. Mm -hmm. Now, lyrics and storytelling were a tie. Let's say, listen to what I'm saying. Let's say we were to give the lyrics and the storytelling to Kendrick. Prodigy would still win because he wouldn't win the classic album songs debate. 
Because I think the classic album song, the classic albums thing is debatable. The songs thing is not debatable. So Prodigy wins that actually. Okay. That's what I mean about I, when I tell you that P is special. Like he's different. Next like, person is Black Thought, and I think Kendrick beats Black Thought. He probably does, but you want to know what though? This looks more realistic. I don't know how else to say it. It does. And we can put other people like that are higher up, like, you know, kind of like in the ringer and kind of like. Oh, yeah, we're going to do that. Um, yeah. Khalil Hold with the on, Super so Chat says, put Prodigy up with the best. I show and prove uh, I'm not the punchline rapper. My style's more go smooth. Prodigy you, go off. Yeah, Prodigy. You want to know what? Once we do this Kendrick thing, how about we see where Prodigy actually is? Because Prodigy and Meth just moved up, but they're right next to each other. Let's put Prodigy against Method Man and see where he finds. Bet Chuck D at 16 is going to be hard for anybody to jump over. Realize. Yeah, I think so. So we'll so so we'll see about Method Man and Prodigy and see if they got what it takes to jump over Chuck. But I don't know. Chuck's hard. Yeah. But, so Kendrick and Black Thought. I think Kendrick's going to get Black Thought, too, because it's like that career accomplishment achievement impact. Kendrick. Mm -hmm. Live performance is thought to me. Mm. I'm not mad at that. Because of the freestyle capability. Yeah. Right. The clarity. He performs every night. Huh. It's not a problem. Yeah. If you got a crew, you better tell them. Yeah. Lyrics slash storytelling. That's thought. That's thought, actually. Think I think it. the storytelling might be Kendrick, but lyrics. No, not. it's not, because I was about to say most of Thoughts love stories, love songs You're right. are actually stories too. You're right. On top of the other stories that he tells, like You Got Me is a story. You got me is a the story. The hypnotics, a story. Break you off, a story. Mm -hmm. He makes hit stories. You're right. No, you're right. One hundred percent. That's actually He wrong. might not win this. <laughs> he might not. <laughs> Classic album slash songs. Huh. Songs goes to thought. Albums, Kendrick. So that's a tie. Longevity of album songs. That's thought. That's thought. Classic collaborations. That's thought. Look, super lyrical or nostalgic. Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, Gorilla Monsoon. Hold on. Do you want to know who's rapped with everybody else, too? Thoughts rapped with everybody pretty much except for Nas and Jay. Respiration Remix. Think about it. Beans, Mose, yep. Talib, Calm. Yeah. No, you're right. Um, yeah, he, everybody. He's everywhere. Car career longevity quality. That's thought. That's thought in a landslide. Voice. That's yeah. thought. Yeah, that was, you're right. Yeah. Kendrick didn't actually didn't take much off of thought. Yeah. Gary with the super chat says, Dead Prez, uh, bring it on. Can I live? That's classic, Jay. Yeah. I'm off for presidents to represent me. Jay Show with the Super Chat says, Who would y'all rate higher, the game or Freddy? Both underdogs in the top 50 combo. Hmm. I would say game because of documentary Doctor's Advocate and, and um, documentary 2 and 2.5. Yeah, he just got so much. 300 uh -huh. bars and running and stuff. Yeah, I'm going game. You want to do K-Dot and Jada Kiss? Because right now K-Dot's at 20. You want to see? Let's see. Impact. Kendrick. Live performance. Kendrick. Lyrics is Kiss. Storytelling is Kendrick. So that's a tie. Mm -hmm. You don't think that Kendrick's better than Kiss lyrically, do you? You don't believe that. I don't do you? Think so. <laughs> Nobody believes that. Okay. <laughs> Classic albums and songs. I tell you, songs are Kiss still. Yeah, it is. Um, so Kendrick's tie. albums. Longevity of album songs. Huh. That might be Kiss. I thought it was Kiss. Classic collaborations. <laughs> That's Kiss. Career longevity quality. Hmm. See why you shouldn't take five years off from rap? You see why you shouldn't take five years off? It's you that see five how the measure, break, yeah. you see, 
You see how this five years of it. Remember when I was talking, I was like, well, I was like, well, I had him borderline top 10. I was like, but then he took five years off and things change in this game. When you take five years off now, you see how he's affected in this criteria, yeah. because it's like when you look at it, it's like, well, where are your collaborations at? It's like, well, you've been gone for five years. You ain't been collaborating with no damn body. Right. And you wasn't a big collaborator when you was active for the five years before that. What's your longevity look like? Well, you don't have any longevity. You just got done taking five years off. Took What's half the longevity of your, of your albums look like? Well, you only been here for 10 years, but you took five years <laughs> yeah. off. Yeah. You understand how all these things are affecting him now and how he should be higher, but he wanted to go take a break. You're right. The way black people break. M MC with the super chat says, Freddie is nice, but he ain't K-Dot. Let's be real. Hold on, voice? <laughs> no, no, no. no. So he oh lost my, that he's one too? The top 20. He's out. He lost, yeah. No, we're going to put him, like, we're going we gonna to slide him until he slides somewhere. I, I, we might, look, if he keeps sliding, we might not make it to, um, we not, might not make it to doing Prodigy. We might have to get out of here because Kane's up next for him. Kane is up next. Let's go with Kane. Impact, Impact is Kane. Look, that's what I'm saying. You understand he's been winning Impact but losing all these battles, and he's losing Impact to Kane. He's going to so lose live performance, too. Up to, 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 hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's losing lyrics, too. Mike gets a tie. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's not better lyrically than Kane. He never has been. Storytelling, yeah. So it's a tie. Classic albums and songs, I'll give him that. Not songs. How many classic well, songs does Kane have? You know what? I, I, you're, you're right. I'll give him that. I give I'm going to give him that. Longevity of album songs? I'll give him that, too. Okay. Classic collaborations? That's Kane. That's Kane. As crazy as that seems, even for the era that he came from, he's got Platinum Plus. He's got the Symphony. Yep. He's got shit that he just did last year with Busta and Cool G Rap. Yeah. He got stuff he did last year with Busta and Cool G Rap. Yep. Nigga been rapping since we was like four. Yeah. Yeah. Career longevity quality. Kane disappeared too. Yeah, he did. But he came back. And he's been active ever since. Yeah. And he's out In here some performing. Sort of shape, form of capacity. Yeah. Yep. Voice. I don't think we need to discuss that. That's Kane. You see where this voice thing matters too? Yeah. This voice and uh, the activity matters too. Yeah. Let me 80, see. 20 rule, Mike. You got to show up and you got to have certain qualities. I hate this. This I is don't. happening. This is what I've been telling y'all. This really nobody makes... Nobody like to listen to Coop. No, no, nobody like to listen to Coop. This, no, make, this really makes it look like, like an like, old no, head. When you, take, when you take five years off and there are other great motherfuckers around, it affects things. This is what I was talking about. <laughs> Maybe we need to insert Cole into the conversation a little bit more. Might need to put Cole back in the conversation. Yeah. Well, hold on. We're at DMX. You want to do DMX? Sure. Let's do it. Impact. X. Yep. Live performance. <laughs> X. <laughs> See what I mean? Lyrics and storytelling. Kendrick. I don't think he's a better storyteller than X. Yeah. I'm not mad at that. Do you? Actually, know. you want to know it? No, I'm a, for technicality, I'm going to give it to him over that. Because he's technically... How much a dollar costs in Duckworth? It's like, I don't know if X can do that. Okay. Classic albums and songs. That's X. Yeah. Well, at least songs is. Albums, so, no. Albums is Kendrick? Yeah. We'll go, Ty. Longevity of album songs. I don't know, man. I think Kendrick's stuff's lasting longer than a lot of X's stuff did. I'll give you that. I can see that. Classic collaborations. X. X. Longevity quality. Kendrick, I think. Voice. X. X still won this. Oh, my God. Because they had a tie, and Kendrick only got three, and X got four. Mm, mm, mm. You can't be taking time off. This rap voice shit matters. This rapping on a regular basis shit matters. I keep on trying to. 
Buster Rhymes ain't gonna beat him, man. You gotta go to work, Mike. You gotta go to work every day. This is really what this shit comes down to. You have to actually go to work right. and do your job. Like this is about him not doing his job. You understand? Because some of the stuff he's gonna lose, like voice, he gonna lose. Like songs, he probably gonna lose. But you can show up to work every day. You can collab with other people. But you don't want to do that now, do you? Because you special. You're 23rd right now. You're 23 like Michael Jordan right now. That's what you are. Jermaine Johnson with the Super Chat says, we need to add freestyle moments as a bonus for criteria when ranking MC slash rappers. Example, Black Thoughts Funk Flex freestyle should have, uh, shouldn't never be ignored when discussing his albums, verses, and moments. I agree. I think moments is definitely something that might need to be added. MC with the Super Chat says... Five moments, years or not, Jada don't got a classic. K dot has two. Don't measure impact, and y'all got to get out of that old school thinking of thinking that the album is the end all be all, and there are so many other things else that matters. The voice is what makes you want to listen to the album to begin with. That's true. Thirty six Chambers says uh, we keep adjusting the list and sometimes reevaluating the same artist. At what point do we submit the uh, the rankings and only adjust when major changes happen? Well, we didn't really test out Kendrick yet. We haven't tested Kendrick yet. And I want people to understand, it's the 27th of January. We started doing this at the top of this month. People act like we've been doing it for like six months or something. Do you know how hard this is and how long this takes? Y'all should be happy that we're somewhere like in the 20s, like in the high 20s, like th- like four or five, six shows in. Because like it, it actually is like tough like to process it through. And the only reason that I wanted to put them through the ringer is I told you, some of these people that you think that are like this when you really start using a measuring stick for them about how they perform, it's like, well, it's not really what you think it is. And then some people like a KRS-One, it's like, well, look at how far he went up. Look how far Kendrick's going down. Well, here's the reality of the matter. KRS-One's never really stopped, now has he? Mm -mm. We got to take our time with this to get it right, you know? Uh, Mad Max with the Super Chat says, I was bumping Big L, the bigger picture, and Platinum Plus came on, and Kane went crazy. I said to myself, he's Man. top 10, and Big L is the top 10 lyricist ever. I love Platinum Plus. I think that's one of my favorite premiere tracks. Kane's verse on there is crazy. Big L went crazy on there. Incredible record. Great I think L's a better lyricist than Jay. I always thought that. Mm. L was the best lyricist Harlem ever seen, in my opinion. Mm. Okay, so he's going against Busta Rhymes, and maybe we can get up out of here after that. Yep, Impact. Kendrick. Live performance. Busta. Lyrics and storytelling. That's Kendrick. Kendrick. Classic albums is Kendrick. Songs is Busta, so that's definitely, a tie. Definitely, definitely. Longevity of albums and songs. I think that's I think Busta. That's Kendrick. Oh, no, 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 you're right. Um, I think songs, Buster, but albums, Kendrick. Okay, it's tied. Classic collaborations. I don't think we've That's even discussed that. Longevity, quality, Buster ain't never took a break. You're ever. Right. You're right. Buster done had people shot and murdered in his crew. It ain't take a break. No, you right. get what I'm saying about how this break be looking? It's like, like, like I hear you, fam, but life be going on for everybody else. Like, I don't want to say it, but somebody who might be the greatest rapper of all time, like, he might have lost, like, a parent and not took this type of break. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? No, you're right. But even with that kind of break, and I say this even with Andre, right? It makes you feel like, well, you must not have much in the tank. Or, yeah. or or the zest or the zeal to do it. Yeah. And it's reflective in the product. Yeah. It reflects in the work. Gary with the Super Chat says, the best ability is availability. You have to go to work. Oh, and for the criteria, add battle and freestyle and, separ- and, um, and separate song classics and classic albums. And separate songs and classic albums. Excuse me. Okay. Hold on. Let's separate it then. Hold on. I'm going to separate the lyrics and the storytelling. See, people be like, lyrics and storytelling are together. It's like, okay. Uh, Christopher Hogan with the Super Chat says, Ross cool. Uh, I'm sorry. Ross over cool G rap. Ross needs more respect. <laughs> Ross is, man, his catalog is crazy. We're going to get to Ross yeah. soon. 
we get the Ross. Hold on. So, nope. I'm gonna separate it for everybody. Longevity of album, longevity songs. Hold on one second. Because essentially, when you separate them, just giving the same people. I mean, it's like, the same thing. Yeah. yeah, it's the same thing, but it's cool. No, no, no. I see what people are saying. Voice is Buster, right? One, two, three. Yeah. Uh, one, two, three. No, he lost the bus Buster by one because of the voice, six to five. Think about it. Impact is Kendrick. Live performance is Buster. Lyrics is Kendrick. Storytelling is Kendrick. Classic albums is Kendrick. Songs is Buster. Mm -hmm. Longevity of albums is Kendrick. But the rest of it, Mike, songs, Buster, collabs, Buster, longevity, quality. Buster, voice, Buster. I mean, what criteria do you want me to give him? We think about what we gave him. We, we gave him we impact. Can't, we, we can't gave move him the albums. Right. We can't. This move is what I was telling people. It's like it ain't like that. Family took five years off. This what happened. We take five years off. Well, Lil Kim's next. Impact. Hold on, hold on. Let me hold on. Let me fi fix the list right quick so you can put it back up. Mm -hmm. And understand, we're just at 28. We ain't even added nobody back in the mix. Like, we need to throw people back in the mix next week, actually. Yeah. And you're right. Cole might be the first person we need to start sliding back in here. Yeah. Activity so, matters. Yeah. So, yeah. Impact. That's uh, Kim. It is. Live performance. That's Kendrick. Lyrics. Kendrick. Storytelling. Kendrick. Classic albums. Kendrick. Songs. That might be Kim. I think it's Kim. Yeah. Longevity of albums. That, hmm. I don't think he has, I don't think he yeah. has anything. How, how is that's good Kim? Kim? Like, hardcore is still like a masterpiece. Like, it hardcore is. is still. No. no, that's Kim. All right. Songs. I think that's Kim. Okay. Longevity of songs. Okay. Like, think about it. No time still getting played, Mike. No, you're right. No, no matter what people say, still get played. You're Lady right. Marmalade still get played. All about the Benjamins getting played. Yeah, you're right. Still hear the Quiet Storm remix floating around sometimes. Yeah. Classic collaborations. Well, I think I just kind of like that's him. I think we just settled that. Career longevity quality. She did a bid, Mike, and didn't take five years off. Well, the last album that she put out, well. I don't know. Last time she put out was what 2020, but before that it was um um it was um um you know what I'm talking about. The one that got five mics. Um La Bella Mafia, the naked truth. Naked, the naked truth. truth. Naked truth. She did a big mic. She did. I guess longevity she still gets that longevity. I say if you want to give it a tie because she took such a long break yeah, before she, she took a break another too. album. Yes. But she was just so much hyperactive than he was in her prime. No, that's true. So I call it, you want to call it a tie? No, that's you want to give it the voice. <coughs> I think this is interesting. I think it might be Kim, in my opinion. I think it is too. 36 Chambers says, um, we have praised Kendrick for his live performance before, but he hasn't won a single matchup on this. Is he a bad live performer at that point? He just won the live performance against like a few of these people. He's just up against great performance. Against... He lost to Kim, Mike, six to four in a tie. Oh, gosh. I, I don't even want to keep going. We're out of the top 25 now. No, he's at 25. He's just up against Cool G Rap. Uh. I think we can do Cool G Rap and then we can get out of here. Okay, let's do Cool G Rap and get out of here. Impact, G Rap. I would tell you. Oh, you sure? Uh, Are you I'm sure not, that's not, not a tie? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That might be Kendrick. Yeah. I was actually thinking it might be a tie because Cool G Rap has the babies, but Kendrick has the influence of the culture. Correct. So I'd say that that's actually a tie. Okay. Live performance, Kendrick. Mm hmm. Lyrics, G. Yeah. Storytelling, Kendrick. Yeah. Or you think Kendrick's a better lyricist than I G? think it might be flipped. I don't know. I, I like that being a tie all around anyway. But You think you think lyrically they're a tie? I think so. Storytelling. 
I don't know. I, I don't know. That that's that's tough to call. I think that might be a tie too. Okay, let's go tie all around. Classic albums. Kendrick. It's not as far apart as you think, though, but it is. Yeah. Songs. Kendrick. Longevity of albums. Kendrick. The way his albums are getting heralded for their era is what I would say. People don't talk about Wanted Dead or Alive or Road to Riches the way that they should. Right. Correct. So, yeah. Songs. Longevity of songs. I think that is G-Rap because I think stuff like Rikers Island, Hill Street Blues. Um, what's the one that Pete Rock, uh, Truly Yours? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a demo. Like yeah. people have remade, reworked them, and flipped them. Like so, I would tell you that songs might be fast life, right? Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, first nigga, the primo remix, road to riches, road to riches. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Streets of New York, uh, it, um, yeah, streets of New York. It might be G. He just has more of that classic catalog from that classic time. Like, like that's what I mean. Is like, where's Clint Kendrick? Like classic, like songs. I like don't know that he got. You know, we're talking back, about songs that got released too. Backseat freestyle. You know what I'm saying? You got um, poetic mm. justice. You got mm. all right. You got um, um, uh, DNA. You got humble. We can go Kendrick. Okay. Classic collaborations. Huh. That's G rap probably. That's G. Yeah. Longevity quality. For the career, that's G. That's G for the career, yeah. Voice. I got G, but if you want to tie it, I'm cool with yeah, it. Yeah, I, love- I, I was going to say I got Kendrick because of his versatility of voices and stuff. I don't know. If we tied it, what does this look like? I mean, people in the chat are mad right now. I say, y'all look Nobody happy. asked them how they felt. Kendrick, Kendrick wins this even if, we, even if he loses this. Okay. So. okay. Well, there it is. So- so that's where he would be. So he's he's at twenty five, Mike. Hmm. Yeah, I think we need to start. So so at, we have Redman at twenty eight, and here's who's next up: Cole, Pusha T, Slick Rick, Big Boy, Rick Ross, Eminem, Game, Ti, Styles, Lupe. Those are the next ten that I have docketed off. Okay. So I think Cole, Pusha, Slick Rick is where we start the conversation next week. Well, let's do that, man. Um now nah, that that was man, it is it's uh very rigorous to go through this. <laughs> no, it is. People understand it's like just going through one person can take us like 10, 15, 20 minutes, just kind of parsing out like how they really fare against their competitors when you actually do a legitimate criteria. Right. Not how you feel, not what's trending, but a legitimate criteria, like the things that matter, like your voice, your albums, your songs, how it held up how you perform. Like, you know, the shit that matters that we spent our whole lives talking about. I just see that that five-year break has really hurt, you know, him amongst some of the people who have, like, such a wealth of a catalog and a wealth of a career. It's really, you know, it's unfair, honestly, if we were to give him those points with that five-year break and a ten-year career. No, this is what I'm saying. If you have a ten-year career Mm -hmm. and you take a five-year break... I don't care what the media and the populace and the fan base is saying. We have to rate you next to your competitors. Yeah. Now, if we said something that wasn't factual in his rating next to his competitors, then let's have that discussion. But the reality of the matter is, is, is that what happens when you take a five-year break is that you give people that were here long before you the chance to further amass their catalog. Yeah. You've only been, you was only, you only rap for five years, fam. Now look at somebody like, I don't know, Nas, who's literally going into year, I don't know, like 30. Yeah. And, and Well, Mike, well, he had a five-year break or something close to it. But Mike, before he did, he was rapping for about 15 to 17 yeah. years straight. And since he's come back, he hasn't stopped. Yeah. And his break involved giving us guest verses and guest appearances. It's like, you understand, when we didn't get an album, we still got Echo and Nas album done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what his and idea even, is. And even people is. like KRS, man, like, they just never KRS stopped. one has never stopped. He refuses to stop. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, um, 
I don't know what else to say, man. Everybody have a great weekend. And like I said, man, go follow my man Swig over there uh, on Instagram. Uh, I think it should be at the bottom right now. Swig, S-W-I-G-G underscore DiCaprio, like Leonardo DiCaprio. Terminator. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mike D, unblock Terminator 2. Rigid, 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 Rigor uh, off, rigid. block me. All right, well, yeah. We <sighs> blocking people, guys. What are we doing? <sighs> okay. All right, we'll, we'll handle all that on the back end. All right, well, everybody have a great weekend. And uh, shit, we will see y'all next week. Enjoyed this talk. They said we're capping, but you know, I I don't know, man. It's uh, we're not we're we're not capping. Like show how, how about how about this? <laughs> show me the songs. Show me the albums. Like I can I can list when you even with the lyricist thing, Mike. When you were like, I don't know if Kendrick is a better lyricist than Prodigy. It's like show show me the give up the goods. Show me two verses from Kendrick on any one of his songs where you're just like, oh my god. Show me the quiet storm. Where it's three verses of the oh my god, show me the one verse that's like shook one's part two. Like show me, like if you'll show it to me, like I, like yeah, I'll say it. But it's like where is it though? Esquire, we really uh, respect his input. He has a super chat before we get out of here. He says the criteria isn't the issue; it's the inconsistent application in the law. We call those outcomes uh, determinative decisions. But how are we misappropriating the criteria when we're applying the same criteria to everybody? That's that's not factual what you're saying, Esquire. You can be an attorney, sir, and be wrong. And the reality of the matter is, is that we've applied the same criteria to Kendrick that we applied to everybody. Y'all just don't like it. And I want you to know, we actually changed the criteria for him, and I separated it just now live to make it more favorable for him, actually. So if anything, we actually just changed it to make it more favorable for him by separating some of this some. And he still couldn't get no wins in. It's not determinative. It's the fact that he took five years off. I, I think that's the factor that I'm seeing that in a vacuum, obviously, in a vacuum, his skill set, what he's been able to bring to the game and what he's been able to bring to the mainstream, it puts him at like damn near top 10, right? But when you start going through that criteria, that five-year break, is what really kind of has pushed him to the back. So yeah, from what I'm different. seeing, because if we're looking at, let's just say he consistently did what he uh, was doing that first five or six years of his career, and not even every year, but let's just say he did two albums. Let's just say, all right, so it's 2017. He drops an album in 2019, 2021, and then is on track to do one this year and does some features and stuff. He's top 10. Or and we're at not least even sniffing. having this conversation. Yeah. I think that five-year break and having uh, a 10-year career, well, let's say an 11-year career, right, with a five-year break, and your contemporaries are people who've been around 20 to 30 years, and many of them haven't stopped, that's what has pushed him to the back okay. from what I'm seeing. Okay, Esquire, this is what I mean, and here's what you have to understand about how detrimental like, it is. And we don't say this often, but I'm just going to explain this to people. Nas has almost done Kendrick's career output in the last two and a half years. Like, go look at it. Go look at go look at how many records have been recorded by Kendrick, and then go look at just the KD. Go look from Nas here to KD. And what I'm saying is, is that you got a man that started rapping in 1991, whose first album came out in 1994. It's pushing 50, and in a five-year break, that you're gone. He can almost amass your catalog song for song. No, nah, fam, we're not changing the criteria. The fact of the matter is, is that fam took five years off. And <clears throat> I'm going to put this in school and education terms so people understand. Well, he doesn't work well with others, Mike, and that matters in the real world. The collaborations, especially in hip hop. What did the glove just say about how great songs get made? What did he say? Yeah, collaboration. Said it's a collaborative effort. Yeah. Well, well, that means collaborations matter in terms of making great music. So that means although this music may be great, but when you don't work well with others, just like we get Doc Ford in class, remember, get, like, I don't know about you, I got a couple needs improvements for working well with others. <laughs> got a couple needs improvements. DFW <laughs> Herbie. Uh, got, with, got a couple ends. Got a couple needs improvements. DFW Herbie with the Super Chat says, y'all overrating uh, the 90s. God. Um, Esquire says, uh, you're right, the criteria hasn't changed, but y'all are applying the uh, factors equally across the board. Yes, we are. 
We, I'm, and I'm explaining how we're applying it like fairly across the board. If you can go show me where his consistency is, if you can go show me where his collaborations are, because he's losing all of those. So you understand losing those two in a criteria where only nine to 11 things are out is enough to cause you to lose against top tier competition. So if you can go show me where he works well with others and consistently performs at a high level and has classic collaborations, because Mike... In like, comparison to his contemporaries. That's yes. what I'm saying. Like, yes. nostalgia and control is the best that you got. Like, I'm sorry. Like, push it. Pusha T's on nostalgia and Pusha T's collaboration shit is blowing his shit no, out no, the water, real. fam. Gary says uh, criteria and application are on point. K isn't top ten. Um, and I'm gonna get this last super chat in here. And we're gonna get out of here because I didn't know we were gonna go down this rabbit hole. Esquire says, "So how do we justify keeping Rock Kim in the top three? Uh, plenty of hiatuses. DMX still top twenty-five. Okay, we'll run Let's them through on. the ringer next on. show." We can- you know what? We can pull up at the top next week to start if you want. Okay, you want to start at that. the top with Nas? We can do that. Let's yeah, let's do pull it. up at the top. Like okay. like Jay and Rakim are right up under Nas, right? Yeah. So let's like let's say like we got I think we got KRS one kind of fairly parsed out at six. So let's start with Big at five and see if Big can jump over anybody. Okay. And kind of like parse it from there and see if people don't start sliding and we'll work it from there because I think we got a criteria and a basis. So that's why I mean I kind of just want to work the formula first before we start inserting people in. Okay, let's do that. Uh, KC1 with the Super Chat says, I'm not a Kendrick fan, but why don't you uh, hold Kim to the same standard? She wasn't nowhere to be found in the last 15 years. I and think we just gave Kendrick the nod for that. Yeah, we did. We gave him that category. Yeah, we gave him that, and he still lost. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. It's like even against Kim, when we give him, him that, like, that nod, he still lost because it's not... It's not what it should have been when you take five years off in a 10-year rap career. Hold on. Y'all acting like he pulled up in like 2001. He pulled up in 2009. It's 2023. He was gone five of those years. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to go listen to some Kendrick Lamar. (laughs) Everybody have a great weekend.